Hello and welcome everyone to Grid Vision. We sure are excited to be here this lovely Saturday night. Of course, it's a little unusual for us, but we still love to call the major series and that's what we're doing here tonight. We're going to be doing a, a very special event. I do believe 85 laps here for the Grand Prix of Long Beach. I mean, this is going to be Grand Prix. I apologize. That's my country self. Not used to road course racing. Of course, as you can tell, I'm Brian Britt. Uh, I have a special guest here in the booth that, that I'm actually uh, kind of uh, starstruck by. David Land actually going to be my co-commentator here tonight. Of course, Austin Derbyshire, as always, doing a fantastic job down there behind the cameras. But 85 laps, David, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. This is one of the great, uh, this is the granddaddy of them all when we're talking about uh, street racing in the United States. The Long Beach Grand Prix started in 1975 and has been going on uh, up until this point. Uh, only only missed one year in, in between 75 and 2020. What a great event this is. And Formula 4 cars, it's going to be 85 laps. We're pretty much watching an endurance race tonight, so it should be a lot of fun. A combination of an endurance race with the open wheel cars. Happy to be here alongside of you. Yeah, definitely excited to be here for sure. This is a tough track. I mean, the street street courses are always very difficult. And considering these are open wheels race cars, you're going to see the uh, tires probably flying off of these race cars. As you see, 107 degree track side at the moment. Of course, that being Fahrenheit. And uh, these guys are in the midst of qualifying. This is actually somewhat of a last chance qualifier or shootout, uh, if you will, uh, or knockout. I think that's what they called it. Uh, and it, actually, 14 or so drivers are out here uh, making qualifying laps to possibly make their way into the main show. So we have a, a little over 17 minutes uh, remaining for these guys to get some really, really quick lap times in. And of course, it is an open track, so there will be uh, a lot of guys out on the racetrack all kind of turning laps at the same time. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if maybe some guys can take advantage of slipstream or draft, as I would know it as. Uh, but I think we'll go ahead and let these guys uh, kind of turn some laps. Of course, uh, eight people from this session here will make it to the main show. But uh, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, be quiet and rest our voices for the actual main event here in about 17 minutes. We'll be back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, we've been following the uh, qualifying going on right now. Of course, my name is Brian Britt. David Land is my co-commentator. Austin Darbyshire down behind the cameras. He's got the camera trained on Brett Trossen right now. Of course, he is uh, ninth at the moment in the qualifying order. Only by, I do believe, five hundredths does he trail behind Nick Kuhn. This is pretty much his last chance. He's got two minutes and 30 seconds here to uh, pretty much lock himself into the race, David. I mean, how much pressure do you think Brett's feeling right now? Huge amount of pressure. As as you mentioned, there's there's about a tenth that covers uh, fifth through ninth here. And as we know, only eight cars get in to the uh, to the feature race here. So Brett is absolutely on it. He's going to cross the line here. And did he improve? We're waiting on timing and scoring. No, he did not on that last lap. Let's look at timing and scoring here to see exactly what he did. That was a 120.1, so uh, a little bit off what he needs to do right now. But he's right on the cusp. He only needs a couple hundredths of a second to get into this field, but really no one's safe. I mean, outside of your, your fast qualifier right now in this session, Robert Northway, I think he's safe, but pretty much everybody else is within half a second. And as you guys know, the big thing about road racing, I, I was explaining this as we were away, is especially on these street courses, track progression is such a huge factor. The more rubber that goes down on this racetrack and the further we get along in this session, the track grip is gonna go up. So this track is only gonna get faster. And I think in this last minute, we're gonna see a, quite a few bonsai runs to get in this show. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, you see a Wayne Hutchinson who we have on our screen right now. He's definitely trying to make something happen here. Uh, these guys, final countdown has a whole new meaning right now. Almost uh, coming up to a minute left to go in qualifying everyone uh, pretty much uh, standing on pins and needles uh i would not i do not envy these guys i, I feel like my heart rate would be beating uh, out of my chest right now just thinking that i might miss this big event i mean the major series is such an uh, illustrious series uh that we love covering and a lot of these drivers want to you know have their names somewhat on the marquee and uh really it's all coming down to these last 30 seconds yeah so right now brett uh brett tor or actually hutchinson he did a 120.3. His fastest lap is a 120.2. As uh, Brian Barnes moves up uh, a couple of spots doing a 19.9. Um, and and uh, a minute 19 is really what you're looking for right now. I think that's a safe speed. Anybody below a minute 19 I don't think is is safe in this top, uh, this top eight that's going to get through into the next session. As we see the number four car, Brett Torson. He's right on the bubble right now. He's right out of the... Out, almost out of the groove right there sideways as he comes down onto shoreline drive and uh he's only got a couple of corners to go here qualifying is at, done so this is the last chance for torson to get in the show yeah i do believe they're giving him a little bit of a grace period here a minute 45 i think they have remaining i thought it was going to end right there but i think that these guys have been given a little bit of a grace period here brett trossen last chance here let's see what he gets here on this lap and I don't know if uh, that's going to be. We'll see what he gets here lap time-wise. That's slower. That was actually a tenth slower than his last time by. Uh, his last lap was actually a minute 20.5. Uh, so it looks like I think he is going to run out of time. That is just a heartbreaker there for that driver. He was so close, only five hundredths off of the lap time that he really needed to uh, unseat Nick Coon. I bet Nick Coon's, though, probably breathing a breath of fresh air right now. As you can see, Sebastian Jackson, we're watching him right now, actually uh, oh. kind of drifting it through the corners here. I don't know if you want to drift these race cars. No, definitely not, though they do have a drifting competition down in that section of the course on the uh, on the Long Beach Grand Prix weekend, as we see. Uh, looks like everybody's packed it in, so we do have our top eight now here in qualifying, officially, it looks like. It does. Of course, Robert North Northway, you talked about him being the safest one. He was able to lock uh, that top spot by uh, over a tenth, a tenth and a half to be exact. Of course, Dina Vela is uh, second place starting here. Third place, Jonathan Dance. Uh, he's going to be dancing his way on to the next round. Fourth place, Brian Barnes. Fifth place, Jake Fox. Sixth, Ray Partridge. Seventh, Chris Yetito. Yet Yeti Yetito, I do believe that's how you say that. I hope like, I don't get any mean emails for messing that name up. Uh, eighth place, Nick Kuhn, who was probably just, wow, a lot of relief there. But of course, I think he's going to be starting at the uh, rear of the field. Uh, ninth breast Toslin. I mean, that is just a heartbreaker there for him. And I do believe we're going to go ahead and uh, take a step away. We'll be right back with the main event. We'll uh, play some uh, attention to our sponsors 
And uh, we'll be right back with 85 lamps of high octane action around Long Beach. Hey, you know that guy who just before the green flag keys up his mic and asks, anybody got a setup? Well, this is him. This is Adam. And hey, Adam needs some help. On the other hand, this guy over here, this is Steve. Steve is a solid racer and he knows his way around the garage. Steve's problem is time. With a job and a family, he can't find enough time to build competitive setups and to race as often as he likes. But as luck would have it, Steve knows a secret. He lets the Majors Garage crew chiefs do the setup work so he can focus on the racing. At MajorsGarage.com, Steve can get setups for over 60 cars on the iRacing service. So no matter what series he wants to jump into, he is covered. Somebody, anybody, really should tell Adam. See you at the garage. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.
Welcome back, everybody, to GridVision's presentation of the Long Beach Grand Prix, not Pricks, uh, <laughs> for the Major Series. We're definitely excited to be here. My name is Brian Britt. Of course, I have David Land in the booth beside me, and Austin Darbyshire down behind the camera is going to be working some magic with those cameras here tonight as we have 85 laps of action here around this uh, interesting street course. Of course, street course is uh, definitely going to be the important part of it, considering there are walls that surround every bit of this racetrack. And, uh, of course, looks like the temp have cooled down a little bit uh, since the qualifying session. 103 right now track side. As, uh, as I mentioned, 85 laps. Unlimited sets of tires these guys are going to have to play around with. Fuel window about 25 to 30 laps. Uh, but this is going to be a long run. Uh, these guys have been hitting about a minute, 19 second laps, minute, 20 second laps. Uh, so I, I hope everybody's buckled up. They have their uh, popcorn and, and any something to drink. But, uh, David, are you ready for some action here? Absolutely. Yeah, this is going to be wild. Uh, I wasn't quite expecting an 85 lap race. I mean, this is uh, the redacted car length of, uh, of a race here. But the F4 car is a very different machine than what uh, usually races around here at the Long Beach Street Circuit. Smaller car, lighter car, less horsepower, less tire, less aero. But the racing we're expecting is going to be extremely close. So this is going to be really exciting. I do believe we actually have the uh, the starting grid, I do believe, lined up here. Um, but I think we're actually going to look at our schedule here first. And, of course, uh, coming up tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be at Watkins Glen in the Global Racing Truck Series. Uh, so definitely make sure you tune in. Me and Austin Estrom is going to be on the call for that one. Uh, starting uh, this Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be at Phoenix. And that's going to be the conclusion of the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series uh, championship, of course, Wednesday, Pocono Raceway on the docket there at uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the Thunderclap boys. Of course, Ryan Truex and everybody's going to be there. And uh, as they continue to their playoff run, of course, on Friday, we're going to be uh, doing some NIS E-NASCAR iRacing Series at Daytona. So that's going to be some plate racing uh, definitely for you. Of course, Sunday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or next Sunday, I should say, is going to be Daytona as well, uh, 12.30. And it looks like I kind of figured this was actually going to be uh, a standing start, but it looks like we do have the grid set. Everybody is starting to roll here. And, of course, starting on the pole is uh, Dina Vela. Of course, second place, uh, Brett Tonson. Uh, Wayne Hutchinson uh, starts up on, on third place. Is this correct? Because I remember this was actually from the qualifying uh, earlier. That yeah, we I had. thought course, Brett got knocked out of the field. <laughs> I do believe that's Okay, so, okay, that was actually, do apologize, fourth place, Richard McClure, uh, Sebastian Jackson starting in fifth, sixth place, Brian Scrivener, as the green flag is actually out, I do apologize, uh, we were having to go through the schedule there, seventh place, Brian McCreevy, uh, eighth place, Ken Lewin, as of course, let's just go ahead and start covering the action, a little bit of a mistake there on our part, ladies and gentlemen, do apologize, but of course, the uh, race is underfoot here, David. Uh, yeah. So I'm told. Yeah, there's. It looks like they're still on grid, at least from what I see. I must be in the wrong session, do I? I do apologize. Oh, we'll keep keep calling through it. Then I do apologize. Of course, 13th place Jason uh, Lot Ridge, 14th place Chris Herring, 15th Wesley True, uh, Ryan Steele in 15th or 16th, I should say, 17th Bryce Roberts, uh, 18th place Roger uh, Shank. Uh, 19th place, Adam Johnson. Of course, uh, rounding out the 20th uh, is, I do believe, Rory Weatherington. Yeah, here we come down. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, where are we? We're at uh, Damian Cotley, Wayne Taylor, uh, Do Daniel Dodson, and hey, we're gonna, about to go green. And the well, there's line. three abreast going down into turn one. That is correct. Definitely some exciting racing already here. As you see, three wide into turn one. Somehow they kept that together. A big move, though, there for Schreibner up to the lead here. He's going to try to pull away. Of course, side by side at this track, a lot of times is uh, a lot slower than single file considering we're that street course. Yeah, uh, everyone was really well behaved there. I think that was our big worry on lap one here with these F4 cars is that everyone was going to get their lather up and try to, you know, make it. Make a big move on lap one, though. We got a spin in the back. Oh, keep it off the wall. Hold the brake. Yeah, it doesn't look like he did it. Can't tell which driver that is. That is the number 
80 car, and that is uh, Timothy Klaus. So, unfortunate lap one. That's that's what you want to avoid on an 85 lap race here at Long Beach. But uh, uh, yeah, unfortunate here. Let's see if we can see what happened. Uh, as we've got a replay here of Adam Johnson on the start. Let's see what happened here going into turn number one and heading into the fountain section. One of those parts of the track that we expected to see some chaos, and I think we got a little bit of it at least, some lockups. Yeah, not a surprise. That's a very uh, difficult area, especially to be you know side by side and trying to avoid guys that are uh, in front of you there. Uh, but looks like, uh, you know, you don't want that to happen on lap one. I mean, 85 lap race. I mean, these guys do have one faster pair, and they're going to be having to hope for a full course caution, of course, to be able to get back in this thing. Lots of traffic here. Uh, this is a replay of Timothy Klaus losing control uh, coming out of turn five. It, this is going to be one of the, the corners we're going to see a lot of issues. Those curbs on the inside, those things are nasty, and those things can launch these little uh, light Formula 4 cars up into the air. We even see that happening uh, with the, the redacted cars here in iRacing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, it looks like a lot. it's gotten a lot closer here at the front. The Canadian Sebastian Jackson leads from uh, Wayne Hutchinson and, and Ken Tig. T. Lang uh, in third place. He's up five spots from his starting position. So um, it looks like we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of action here at the front here in a couple of laps. Yeah, 100%. Of course, uh, draft and or slipstream, I should say, as you would probably uh, know it as. Uh, definitely going to bring these guys into, I think, uh, back together here. Uh, of course, going to have to really just keep focus and try to look ahead. I mean, this is a track that you definitely do not want to, I think, look in your mirror. I mean, if you look behind yourself, there's a wall that could be there to meet you if you make a mistake. Yeah, you brought up the slipstream. In junior formula cars, a lot of times it is a slipstream battle. Even at a track like this here at Long Beach where you can see uh, the hairpin corner, uh, pretty much whatever car you're in, that's going to be a 30-mile-an-hour corner. It doesn't matter how fast or how much horsepower you have. Uh, there's definitely a speed limit on those streets. But as they head down Shoreline Drive, this is where you're going to see the big draft. As you can see, there's a move there in the back as we've got a little bit of nice uh, playing there. As we've got a car, it looks like, in the wall out of turn number one. I uh, can't tell which car that is yet, but that was definitely one of the leaders. It might have been uh, McGreevy. Is that, is that right? I think McGreevy is still uh, scored in third at the moment. I do believe that actually was Ryan Steele. I think he actually recovered uh, to still hold that seventh place position. So it was not the worst thing that could have happened, but I did see Don uh, Dolson uh, back there. Uh, he, he was actually up in, I do believe, 17th or 18th. He's now back in 27th and has actually taken a tow. Big accident there with a 0-4. Yep, we got, we got a wing off. The 68 car has had more issues. That is McGreevy. So that's uh, problems coming into turn number eight. Let's see what happened to the number 86 car here, or 68 car, sorry. Uh, coming down just a little too hot, loses the rear end, gets the tire wall, and uh, that is not a good way to start here at the Long Beach Street course. No, not at all. I mean, on lap three only, and he still has not made his way to pit road. He is still out there with a wing missing, and you kind of need a wing at this racetrack as you see a couple cars actually coming down pit road. McGreevy uh, coming down uh, to probably get some damage repaired here. Of course, these guys do have fast repairs, but I think the thing, you really don't want to use that. One fast repair uh, is not a lot, uh, you know, for an 85 lamp race. So I would try, if I could, to maybe get that wing attached back on that race car and, and try to get back out there without having to use that fast repair because you want that later if you do have uh, even more catastrophic damage. Yeah, street racing is a full contact sport. Uh, it's much... You know, it's kind of like uh, short track racing in stock cars. You see a lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, a lot of contact with the walls. And, and like you mentioned, uh, iRacing gives us the opportunity to repair our car uh, a lot faster than we would in real life. But uh, you also want to limit that as a series, and that's what they've done here. And it makes it, it, makes it difficult, and it makes you have to, to really think – when you're making a move, although you do have a, a reset button, you only get to press that reset button once. And, you know, race control has not yet thrown a full course yellow. We're expecting at least one today. I think it would be an absolute miracle if we did not get one in 85 laps here with as uh, tough as these guys are racing out here. But uh, even if you use that fast repair, 
this is one of the longest pit lanes in iRacing, really, and just racing in general. And you think about pit lane deltas. That's something we talk about a lot and probably will be talking about during this race. Uh, you, it, and what, what I mean by that is it means pit lane entry to the amount of time you're on the pit limiter to pit exit. This is one of the longest pit lanes in motorsports. So even if you go down the pits and get that fast repair, that still costs you a tremendous amount of time on the racetrack. So, uh, you know, just because you have a reset button does not mean that suddenly uh, you're right back into this race. You still got a lot of work to do if you use that. No, 100%. And if you, and if you get too uh, big a damage, you also have to try to limp that car around to pit road as we're watching. I do believe uh, Wesley True here, I think he might have had uh, some issues. As, of course, I also noticed that we had a pass for third place, uh, Jerry Isaacs. When we get to that, uh, we'll actually talk about that race car. Because I know you actually mentioned something about Jerry Isaacs uh, before we even started the broadcast about how you liked how colorful that race car was. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we we bet have a better chance of lift, listing which colors are not on that car than the <laughs> ones that are on that car. Uh, very psychedelic uh, livery here, uh, but it's certainly easy to spot, and and we appreciate that. Uh, anytime any of these competitors can make their car easy to spot. We as broadcasts, uh, broadcasters appreciate that. He's even gone through the trouble of, of uh, listing the upper and lower element of the wing. So if he knocks any of those off during the race, we'll have, have an easy time uh, showing that off. But we got a pass here down into turn one off of Shoreline Drive. Yeah, Billy Ballerman, he has been really incredibly fast the last couple laps. Uh, you know, he, the, the time before, he was about a half a second or so faster than Jerry Isaacs. Of course, the slipstream definitely helping him out quite a bit. He's going to hope that he can get ahead and just drive away, but we've been having a, an incredible race uh, for this third spot and on back. I mean, these guys have uh, really not uh, gotten away from each other, and, and that's what really uh, we love to see for sure, but of course, one driver that has kind of pulled away is uh, the Sebastian Jackson. He's had a, about a, a second and a half gap at the moment on Wayne Hutchinson, uh, who's in second. Yeah, we got we got two drivers who have really uh, checked out and become the the uh, the pride of the field right now. I, I should mention about Jerry Isaacs. I, I believe I noticed some front wing damage on that number uh, fifty one car as we've got a car going backwards. That's, That's usually right. not a good way to do it. Joshua Mertz, I do believe, uh, just went backwards. He was up in the top fifteen. Now is back into seventeenth as he uh, just got passed as well by Drew L uh, Lalonte, Alande, I do believe, as we're going to take a replay here of him uh, spinning around. Um, one thing I should mention, that these guys are uh, using open setups, so that means that they can actually adjust on the race cars. Now, if they came into this race in race trim that uh, you know maybe was producing uh, maybe too much downforce or not enough downforce, that can affect handling, as we see Ronald uh, McPherson, I do believe, having an issue here. Oh, uh, and he Backed it into the wall, too. That's, uh, you know, when you get it turned around, and he's way off the track. I can't even tell where he is on the circuit. He's going ah. to Burger King. <laughs> yeah, he's going to Burger King. He's off the seaside way there. There is a Burger King around uh, the, the Long Beach Street course, but uh, you have to go a long way off the track to find it, and, and I, I do believe he was trying to find that. As we go back to Sebastian Jackson here leading the race, the gap has is beginning to come down between him and Wayne Hutchins, uh, Wet Hutchinson. Uh, We'll see here. I, I think lap traffic is going to be a factor because we saw in the long shot there at least one car ahead of these guys, and that's going to be the difficult part. Again, you know, with these uh, open wheel cars, it d it depends what the blue flag rules are, obviously. But if uh, if Brian gives them trouble, who I imagine is the lap car ahead of the uh, two leaders, that could be uh, that could be the opportunity that Wayne Hutchinson uh, has to take the lead. That is correct. Of course, uh, speaking of uh, attrition and, and lap traffic, we've actually seen quite a bit of attrition here tonight. Of course, uh, 20, 23rd on back is at least a lap down right now. Of course, we started this race with 31 drivers that were on the lead lap. That is no longer the case. Uh, we've seen a lot of drivers having issues. Uh, Drew Lalonde, who we were actually seeing make passes earlier up in 17th, I do believe he just lost a lap as well. So we're seeing a lot of drivers, uh, almost like the Hunger Games, going across the top of the screen. You're out, you know? No kidding. Uh, big shout-out right now to Clarence Rosa. Uh, I'm looking through the, the field right now. Actually, the biggest mover on the day is Julian uh, Muki, the, the Australian driver. He's in 12th position right now. He's up 16 spots. So uh, on the move, the on the move award right now, 
is Julian. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we cannot confirm or deny if the dog is in the cockpit as well at the moment. <laughs> Might be helping him out a little bit, but uh, a great run right now. And with as long of a race as this is, we're not even an eighth of the way into this uh, or a tenth of 10 percent into this race right now. This is a long one. And if you can move up 16 spots, uh, chances are you're going to be there at the end. Yeah, no, I mean, I, he's having an incredible day. I mean, really fast lap times. He's faster than a lot of the drivers. I mean, the majority of the drivers in front of him right now. Um, so I, I think if he could just kind of work his way through, uh, he's got a really good shot at the top five, possibly long way to go. Who's to say that one of the leaders doesn't make a big mistake? And, and he might even have a chance to possibly even win this thing. I mean, we got to keep in mind, we have a lot of variables that are going on right now. Of course, uh, you know, these guys are going to have to do green flag stops at some point. We talked about the fuel window being about, uh, you know, 30 laps. You know, green flag stops are not an easy deal. I mean, especially at a road course where yellows are not guaranteed. If you maybe make a mistake when it comes to speeding on pit road, that can be a costly error. Yeah, and you mentioned the strategy. Easy, uh, you know, let's say the fuel window is 30 laps or anywhere between 25 and 30 laps. This will be a two-stop race, so pretty straightforward strategy. Hopefully not a lot of saving required by these drivers. Uh, we could see a fuel mileage race, though. There's, a, there's always a chance that one of these drivers is going to stretch the fuel longer than others, or maybe we do have a bit of an issue with fuel with these F4 cars running this long of a race. Remember, this is... This is something that these race cars do not generally do. These races are typically sprint races. They're designed uh, generally to move drivers up the open wheel ladder, not necessarily run feature length events like we're having here. So, you know, once we get to lap 30 and we have to make that first pit stop, we're going to be in uncharted territory for these types of race cars. And, and at that point, Katie, bar the door, who knows what the heck's going to happen? Yeah, definitely. Have no clue, I mean, who's going to be able to make it. I mean, you've you got to think that even in the first five or so laps, we saw a lot of drivers uh, pretty much out of the contention for the victory. Uh, so, you know, there, there's anything can really happen. One thing I'd like to uh, mention, though, the difference in lap times that I'm seeing right now that compared to qualifying, I mean, there, it's over a second off of what we were seeing lap time-wise. I mean, I do believe qualifying times were, uh, you know, minute 19 second laps. We're only seeing a uh, minute 21s. Uh, fastest lap, though, I do believe so far in this race has been, I do believe, uh, Ryan Steele, actually, a minute 20.880. Of course, Billy Bow Bowerson, or Bowerman, last time by actually was the fastest on the racetrack, and he is uh, in that third spot. So you, you always got to remember, we, we were just talking about fuel. This is a great uh, segue. The cars starting the race are a lot heavier than they will be finishing a fuel run. So you'll see, you'll definitely see a difference between the lap times in the race versus the lap times in qualifying as we got a big angry wolf on the side of this uh, machine here, certainly trying to uh, upset his competitors, I, I, I would imagine. A dog bear, in fact, uh, I would imagine that's that's what this car is <laughs> actually supposed to be. Very oh, creative. And he goes oh. around while we're watching him. And that was Ryan course. Steele, and he is going to drop, I do believe, possibly even outside the top 10. As a lot of drivers are trying to get by, he has now fallen now to 10th place. And he's actually back. We're going backwards. He did not hit anything. That is one of the lucky things. But you see just the myriad of race cars that are – he had to back up down to pit lane. All right, now this is interesting. He's decided that he's going to come into the pits. So I wonder if he damaged his car or at least thinks he damaged his tires enough that he needs to come into the pits and make, uh, I guess, a strategy call here. Because maybe from this point on, he's backtracking the race, the strategy. He's going to be trying to uh, to run full flat out the rest of the time. And you saw he made contact just there with the rear suspension of the car. So I wonder if he tweaked it just enough that he thinks he needs to use that fast repair. We were just talking about him as the fastest driver on this racetrack here right now on a full fuel tank. So... That's a tough break, but not as tough as it has been for some of these other competitors who didn't have the luxury of crashing as close to the pit entrance as he did. Yeah, that could have been a whole lot worse. I didn't even see he made contact, so that's interesting you point that out, that he actually did have a little bit of contact, and he ha is coming off of pit road at the moment. He has not gone a lap down yet, uh, so that just shows you how kind of big this racetrack is. So, the, you know, he's going to probably be hoping for some sort of four-course yellow or some way to strategy – could possibly work out for him. We'll have to wait and see and, and keep an eye on Ryan Steele. Of course, he's been setting some really quick laps, uh, and now uh, you add desperation to the mix, and a lot of times that that's not a good cocktail. No, it's not, but I, I, I would hope 
that you know if he's if he's a one man crew, which a lot of times in these junior formulas you do find. But if he does have a spotter uh, or a crew chief, I hope he's telling him, look, you have got 70 laps to go. You have got plenty of time, and you're one of the fastest drivers on this racetrack. Like we've been saying, it only takes one yellow. It takes one of these Formula Four cars flipping into the parking lot of Bubba Gump Shrimp to uh, have this entire race get uh, get flipped upside down and you know the field packed back together so if you've got the car you've got an opportunity and i will say the one good thing about coming out where he did on the circuit if you do have a fast car we talk a lot about in open wheel racing clean air and clean air means a heck of a lot here on a street circuit uh look at i mean we can even talk about this right here when you've got a car ahead of you Every braking zone is compromised. Every corner is compromised because you have wings on these cars. You have dirty air. Yes, you get a little bit of an aerodynamic advantage going down the straightaways, but every corner entry and exit is is compromised because there's a car there. You can't just power off the way you want to because of aero and because of the fact, uh, the sheer fact that there's a uh, a thousand pound race car standing in your way of driving the racetrack the way that you want to do it. So advantageous if he can get a run here down shoreline drive to try to pop out and make a pass maybe not from that far back glad he thought uh, better of it there the thing about long beach is there's plenty of places to pass there are also plenty of places that you don't want to try to pass ideally uh, and some places that you can make a pass like here in turn four but you've really got to think about it you've got to time your pass correctly and you got to trust the guy that you're sending it in on that he's not going to turn in on you yeah, 100%. Of course, these cars are very vulnerable. I mean, uh, one little contact could send you careening into the wall and then having the suspension or tire breaking off. So uh, you could definitely tell Jason Lotridge right now is trying to take it easy. He's trying to be a little bit cautious. He's not really trying to push Roger Shank uh, too much here, but he definitely is showing that he has more speed than him at the moment. I'm wondering what uh, he could do if he did have that clean air, of course. And, and like you said, it really uh, he, he's not going to be as good through the corners but it seems like his driving ability itself is, is compensating there. But, of course, in the straightaways, it does seem to help him him having that uh, that, that actual uh, dirty air, as you will, of course. We actually use that in NASCAR uh, as well. Uh, you know, that's what I'm more used to is NASCAR to the stock cars. Both, I think, uh, disciplines of racing still do have, uh, you know, that actually is a feature that does uh, cause, you know, I'd say uh, some sort of variables for these race car drivers that they have to overcome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and and if you're used to one form of racing versus another one, it's a it's a big learning experience for everybody involved. I, I should mention as well, uh, a shout out to Billy Bowerman, who's running in third place right now, actually set the fastest lap of the race uh, a couple of laps ago. So he's beginning to chase down our two leaders, and I think this driver right here, uh, Billy, is going to have an opportunity to get to second place. He's definitely closing the gap very quickly to Wayne Hutchinson, and he might be the driver that we're going to see have an opportunity. Look how close he gets to the wall yeah. on the exit there uh, to challenge Sebastian Jackson for this uh, for the lead here in the early stages of the Long Beach Grand Prix. Oh, he got incredibly close to that wall right there. He's showing tremendous amount of pace. Last time by, he was three tenths faster. Uh, as we have a car around there, I do believe that uh, Drew Lalonde was just barely able to make it by that race car. That's the second spin for. Uh, for Joshua Mertz, I believe we saw him backwards earlier in the race, so not a great start. As we uh, are, we 15 laps by. Yeah, I think we're taking a look back and seeing Joshua Mertz, uh, his spin here, and uh, definitely very unfortunate spin. Of course, very scary for the drivers there. Oh, right into the front, the front nose cone there into the wall. So that is uh, definitely going to affect his handling. Uh, anytime you affect those wings, it's never a good day as we're now 15 laps into the show here. Mertz, of course, coming off of uh, pit road right now. Yeah, and that's something to look for later on in this race. Uh, the, the actual blend line here at Long Beach is, is difficult. When we see the leaders come in, they've got to be very cognizant of not driving over that yellow line or even the blue line at the exit of the pit lane. That's something that can draw a penalty or draw the ire of the race control and certainly as well put comp other competitors in danger. It's tough on these street circuits to have a proper pit exit uh, that that uh, takes care of all the competitors' needs. So uh, that could be a place later on in the race that we see some action, especially as the pit stops uh, commence uh, here in about 15 laps. But 
tell you what, Billy Bowerman's putting on a clinic right now. He's closing in the gap on Wayne Hutchinson. And, uh, you know, I, I think I was going to mention earlier, you always want to be the chaser in these races. You don't want to be the guy who has to protect. In an open wheel race, uh, more often than not, uh, you can get in your own head when you're leading the race because, you know, it, it, as we've seen earlier on in this race, is we've got a great graphic there of all the marching ants uh, of the drivers going around the racetrack right now. You can see where your favorite driver is running right now uh, in real time on the racetrack. But, uh, you know, w when you have – it's it's so easy to make a mistake in these cars, and it's so costly when you do make a mistake that when you're the leader and you're not really challenged – uh, you're just thinking about you're racing yourself, and sometimes that's the worst person you can be racing out there. No, 100%. And uh, speaking of, we were talking about fastest laps uh, just a moment ago. Actually, Sebastian Jackson just turned his fastest lap a minute 20.669. That is the fastest lap of the race thus far, and he has not had any really the aid of draft as well. So, uh, you know, really fast race car, and uh, he's pulled away now to 3.7 seconds. On Wayne Hutchinson, of course, the battle for second is starting to heat up, though, as well as, of course, uh, Sebastian's in on another. He's in another zip code right now. Yeah, that's definitely a response to Billy. I mean, you, he know he can hear the footsteps behind him. And what's the great sign for him is he responded with it. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, his pace is kind of inconsistent. Mm -hmm. uh, his last lap is a second a lap slower. In fact, Billy on the last lap ran a 120.9. So, in real time on the racetrack, that means he gained about uh, just about six tenths of a second on the leader. So, you know, if you're capable of running a 120, you kind of hope that you have the consistency too. It looks like right now Billy's got a little bit more consistency and he's got dirty air. So once, you know, if he can dispatch of, uh, of Wayne quickly enough, uh, we could really see some fireworks here for the lead. We're going to see how, how difficult or how wide the number 17 dog bear car is about to get here on the Long Beach street circuit because Billy's coming. Billy definitely has the pace as we got another car backwards here. Uh, Chris Herring in turn four. Wow, that was close. That was really close. And, and when you have that kind of speed difference, I'll tell you what, and uh, you make contact, you're probably going for an airborne ride. Uh, the F, the, uh, FAA is going to be asking uh, who's in the airspace when you when you touch <laughs> wheels like that. A little bit of damage on the front wing there. Wonder if that had anything to do with this spin. I would say probably not. Wow, that was close. A lot yeah, of close, close calls. That. And 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 what a recovery too. It didn't really uh, cause him as much to lose as much position as he could have. Fell back to only 10th. Of course, he did lose uh, quite a bit of time. He uh, is now 26 seconds or 27 seconds behind the leader. Of course, he is under fire right now, I do believe, uh, by the 39 of Julian uh, Muk Mukhi. So uh, that is a battle for 10th right now on your screens. And, of course, uh, not far by back as well as I do believe made. I think that's actually a lap traffic. Uh, Joshua Mertz, I do believe. And, yeah, Muki, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, up 17 spots, knocking on the door of the top 10. I think we're going to be talking about him a lot more later on in this race. Uh, Billy Bowerman really, I think, is the is the story right now. Uh, continuing to close the gap on Wayne Hutchins, and you can see, I mean, right in the, uh, the tire tracks right now. The question is going to be, can he send it? Where is he going to send it? There's plenty of places to pass on Long Beach. There's a plenty. Oh, man. That was, if he didn't touch that wall... I mean, I'll tell you what, he's taking every available inch of this street circuit right now to chase down Wayne Hutchinson. And I'll tell you what, when you get in the, the wake, the aerodynamic wake of another car, we, we want to talk about understeer, we want to talk about push, however you want to say it, you take that air off of that front wing, even though it's small and it's not very complex in one of these Formula 4 cars, that's still a significant loss to, those, to the front end grip of your racing machine. So... You want to try to get a pass here if done if you can because uh, that would be very advantageous for Billy. But you got to be smart too. Long way to go. Yeah, 100 percent. And of course, uh, Sebastian Jackson as well has been. You, you mentioned earlier. I think you uh, touched on this, and it's very, very, uh, very true. Sebastian Jackson right now is being very, very inconsistent. The time, the lap before this one, he hit a minute 23 second lap, which has caused uh, Wayne Hutchinson and Billy Bowerman to be about two seconds behind him now. I do believe this could easily develop into a race for the lead very soon. And here's here the go. move. Pass for the second place, possibly. Oh, he backed out of it. We got some lap traffic. 
which may uh, may have factored into that that uh, inconsistent lap time for Sebastian Jackson. Maybe a driver trying to fight to stay on the lead lap, but. Now, going down Seaside Way, there's a big run, and I think we're going to have a pass setting up here. You got to ship it, though, Billy. He's definitely trying as they are side by side. Of course, I do believe uh, Billy has the preferred groove. He's going to make the pass stick. Yeah, definitely. Wayne not able to keep the momentum there. And Billy Bowers, Bowerman now up to that second place position. Does Wayne Hutchinson. Oh, he goes around, and that is going to get someone else involved as well. As they are that, tied together, way, Gary the, Isaac uh, comes up. That's oh. up the whole field. There you go. That is what we fear at Long Beach. At the hairpin, cars running into each other. That's everyone. That is the top five, six cars involved outside of Sebastian. That's second. Oh, we got just all sorts of trouble. I mean, this is this is what we fear at Long Beach. The hairpin is so treacherous here. And you get two cars stacked together, it's going to be a track blocker. And that for the race is very unfortunate because that was everyone from second to fifth place involved in that accident. My word. I mean, I am shocked we did not have a full course yellow. I mean, that was the, the track was literally blocked right there. I mean, guys were coming in there piling in. As we see, I do believe uh, right there, and they just got tied together. Could not go anywhere. That was the, uh, I do believe, the 17 of, of Wayne oh. Hutchinson. Oh, look at that. Jerry Isaacs comes in. Wow. Just That's crazy. crazy. Some big damage here. I mean, every single one of those cars is going to have to go in and get a fast repair. Uh, almost certainly. Maybe Wayne got away with it, but that that's unfortunate. I mean, you hate to see that for all of these competitors. And, and we got another replay here. He just overcooked it going into the hairpin, lost the rear end, and around he went. And Wayne just had nowhere to go, and then just everybody piled in. And, and unfortunate, the unfortunate reality is once you kick it in reverse like that, that we saw the 51 car do, you had those two drivers behind racing for position, and they just had nowhere to go, unsighted, blind corner, and that's the result. And Wayne, like, just monster trucked right over a, truck, a car there. I mean, he just gassed it up and tried to, to un, you know, kind of unattach himself there. Of course, he fell back, I think, 13 and a half seconds from Sebastian Jackson. Jackson is now on another planet. I, I am shocked we did not see a caution there. Uh, looks like the 950 of uh, Roger Shank coming down pit road. So I do believe we're having some green flag stops here. Uh, Jerry Isaacs, of course. I think these guys are just now making it to pit road uh, based on that damage. This has changed the entire complexion of this race. Now only 15 drivers remain on the lead lap, and I think we might have some more drivers that are going to follow that down here very soon. Yeah, pretty much everybody involved in that crash went into the pits. Wayne Hutchinson actually uh, is still out on the circuit. He's running in the second spot right now. Uh, you got to wonder about the damage. It does look like there's some damage to the right front of his front wing. But we'll have to see well, what kind of performance disadvantage that gives to him. Uh, the big winner in all of that is Wayne Taylor, who's up 19 spots in the number three spot right now. He's just kind of keeps swimming. He He's missed a couple of these big ones right now. Um, and, and as we continue to track the uh, progress of Julian uh, Mookie through the field, he's up 22 spots and in the number six spot right now. So I'll tell you what, uh, before we get to the end of this thing, I still think we've got a good race in store, despite the fact that Sebastian Jackson right now is stinking up the show. No, I mean, and keep in mind, I mean, he could easily get involved with, with lap traffic himself. I mean, he, he is not out of the woods yet. Just because he's so far, I mean, out in front, I mean, he still has uh, over 60 laps remaining. Uh, but while, of course, we uh, just are recovering from that huge accident, I think now's the perfect time to uh, take a commercial break, pay some attention to our sponsors. We'll be right back with uh, the continued action here on Grid Vision of the major series, Long, Angela, or Long Beach, I should say, uh, Grand Prix. Hey, you know that guy who just before the green flag keys up his mic and asks, anybody got a setup? Well, this is him. This is Adam, and hey, Adam needs some help. On the other hand, this guy over here, this is Steve. Steve is a solid racer, and he knows his way around the garage. Steve's problem is time. With a job and a family, he can't find enough time to build competitive setups and to race as often as he likes. But as luck would have it, Steve knows a secret. He lets the Majors Garage crew chiefs do the setup work so he can focus on the racing. At MajorsGarage.com, Steve can get setups for over 60 cars on the iRacing service. So no matter what series he wants to jump into, he is covered. Somebody, anybody, really should tell Adam. See you at the garage.
Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Grid Vision. We are excited to be here for the Major Series Long Beach Grand Prix. Of course, my name is Brian Britt. I have David Lynn as my co-commentator, Austin Daubershire, doing an awesome job down there behind the cameras. If you're just joining us, we saw a huge crash that it just happened a few laps ago. And, of course, um, involving Wayne Hutchinson. I mean, we saw uh, a lot of drivers actually pretty much going, having to go down pit road to get some major repairs. Jerry Isaac was involved. Um, I do believe Billy... Uh, Howard Ten Man, I do believe, was uh, involved as well. He had to go down and get a, uh, I do believe it was actually Bowerman, had to go down and get a uh, major repairs. He was one of the fastest race cars on the racetrack. But, of course, we're seeing essentially the uh, remnant of the race, uh, the, of the field after that huge incident, David. Yeah, yeah, kind of an unfortunate one here early on in the race. Uh, we did find out from uh, from race control that there are no full course yellows. So, uh, when we have that big of a crash, even if we send someone into the Bubba Gump Shrimp par parking lot, we're going to keep rolling with this thing. But, uh, yeah, it's tough right now. I mean, that's the biggest gift. I think Sebastian Jackson's uh, Christmas card list just got a lot longer. Uh, per per namely, uh, Billy Bowerman's probably at the top of that list for starting that whole thing. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's going to be, you know, we still have some big movers. And that's, I think, the story. Wayne Taylor is one of the drivers who's made a huge move. Julian uh, Mookie as well. So there's still quite a bit of intrigue left in this race. But certainly without the full course caution being a factor, it's going to be all down on Sebastian's shoulders, which, you know, sometimes that pressure we can see, as we've seen throughout this race, can cause, uh, can cause issues and cause problems. So, you know, he, he's up four spots from his starting position. He didn't even qualify on the pole, but... Uh, no one has matched his pace uh, lap over lap at the moment. He, although it's been a little bit inconsistent uh, at the moment, it, there's no one who's going to touch him. Yeah, that's definitely true. He, he's been incredibly lucky. Of course, he's going to have to deal with lap traffic, but I think a, a lot of the lap traffic uh, he's been dealing with, it, it doesn't seem like it's been hurting him too much here. Uh, but you talk about uh, some of the other drivers that are you know, behind him, like a Rory Weatherington. I mean, very fast uh, laps from him. I mean, Julie Mucky. We talked about him. I mean, he's been up a, a ton of positions, I do believe. Started uh, way back, I think, outside of the top 20. Uh, so a lot of drivers out here still with a chance, I think, to get in this thing and maybe get a, a nice podium finish here. We're only 27 laps uh, into the show. But I'm surprised Wayne Hutchinson is still running as good as he is right now. I mean, he's actually faster than the leader last time by, even with that front nose damage. 
Yeah, sometimes uh, sometimes that damage helps you a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's a little bit less drag on the straightaway to have less of his front wing. But uh, the other factor, of course, uh, we're expecting pit stops around the, the lap 30 mark. Obviously, we've had so many cars uh, come in and out of the pits based on uh, crash damage that uh, maybe it's not going to be as obvious as, uh, as it once was strategy-wise. You can see that damage. Great shot here of the of the the front wing which is definitely uh, shorter on one side than the other but uh, the pit stops are going to be a big factor you mentioned it earlier i mean it's going to be this is something that f4 cars typically do not do our hot live pit stops and um you know coming in and out of the pits it's going to be a very important factor in fact here you go Wayne Hutching, Hutchinson is in the pits right now for his first stop of the day a little bit earlier than we were expecting. We were expecting mainly the lap 30 mark, but you know what? This may be a good opportunity to come in, get a fast repair, especially if he thinks that if he can repair that front wing, he can go much faster on the racetrack and begin to gain on Sebastian. Yeah, we'll have to see if that's going to be the case. I mean, from what I've been seeing lap time-wise, I'm not seeing a whole lot of tire fall off. So I'm not sure if short pitting someone is really going to be the go-to move. We'll have to wait and see if that's going to be the case. I mean, uh, it doesn't seem like it's hurting speed, but maybe maneuverability uh, in these race cars to get through traffic, uh, it might help with the fresh tires. But that's definitely very uh, an interesting thing there for sure. We'll have to see how that affects him. Uh, but that, that also could be the cue for a lot of other drivers to head down pit road. Well, I think specifically in Wayne's case, his car is damaged. And that, that would be the advantage of short pitting, is that you're going to get the car fixed, you're going to use your fast repair, you're going to get out in clean air, and be able to get, you can see, the front wing is repaired. So he did choose the option to use the fast repair, and the sooner you can get in the pits, if you think that front wing is a disadvantage, come in, get that fixed as soon as possible. It's not necessarily a tire advantage, but it certainly could be an advantage in terms of the aerodynamics of the racing machine. And you know what's really incredibly interesting about this, Wayne Hutchinson pitted from second place he only fell back to 11th that just shows you how much uh, of this field has gotten pretty much uh, you know annihilated or has gotten a lap down so uh, it really makes it almost a no-brainer to kind of maybe try an alternate strength strategy as you see Wayne Taylor I do believe pitting from the fourth spot yep this is uh this is kind of what we expect the, the, the monkey see monkey do first person that comes in the pits everyone else is going to follow because you want to try to be on the same strategy as the leaders but of course Sebastian Jackson, especially without the the yellow flag factor being in there. I mean, if the yellow flag was a factor, anybody who pitted and stayed on the lead lap, you would have to come into the pits right now to cover off the possibility of them leapfrogging you uh, in the yellow flag sequence. That's not a factor here. So Sebastian Jackson could just run his own race and pit whenever the heck he wants because right now he's got a clean car. He's got all the, uh, all the, the wings and wheels. They're all on the car and in the right orientation so really it's just right now a hot lapping challenge for him just hang on just come into the pits when you need to and uh and hold on to that lead advantage yeah of course he is still having to deal with some lap traffic but uh so far so good for him um so we'll have to see i think i think it's really going to come into play the traffic i think that you're you're right about that i think if wayne uh, or some of these other drivers can maybe short pit and get into clean traffic uh, and maybe if Sebastian actually has to deal with more traffic than them, that could be a huge factor. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Of course, uh, Sebastian right now has a 25-second lead over Rory Weathering Weatherington. Uh, so definitely big gap there. Of course, he's been running some better laps. And uh, the, the more of this race goes on, the I think the more consistent the Sebastian Jackson's going to get as well. We talked about how uh, inconsistent he was earlier. Uh, but these guys have a lot of time to, to kind of get consistent, right? Absolutely. Yeah, there's still plenty of time left in this race. And, you know, there's something that there's a couple of things that I think we need needs mentioning right now. Uh, the gap between him and Rory isn't necessarily important because that, that was a big gap anyway before the pit stop. Uh, we're going to have to see once Sebastian comes into the pits what that gap is to Wayne Hutchinson. That's going to be the real key. And the other thing about lap traffic and why it's going to be a bigger issue for Sebastian versus any other driver in this field is Sebastian's the leader. He controls whether or not a driver is a lap down or not. And you're going to see lap cars race him harder because uh, that's the, the difference between staying on the lead lap and not staying on the lead lap in this race. So that's going to be the difficulty in lap traffic for Sebastian. And obviously, the other factor that any driver has lapping a car is you got to hope that that lap car sees you, is aware of you, 
and doesn't turn in on you in some of these very tight corners. We've already seen the result. And, he, and here's the other thing. Some of these other guys, I mean, we've already seen a big pileup earlier on in this race as we've got a car around in the uh, runoff area in turn one. That's uh, Brian Scrivener there. But, uh, you know, if there's a big accident, uh, you know, there's nothing saying that Sebastian Jackson or any other of our lead contenders could be caught up in that uh, in that melee. I mean, it, we saw guys who had absolutely nothing to do with that previous pileup. As, well, there you go. There's how treacherous the pit exit is. He couldn't even get it turned down into turn one coming out of the pits. But uh, no harm, no foul. Brian Scribner continues on in the race as Re Wesley True uh, is uh, in the pits. Yeah, I did believe he's pitting from that eighth place position. Uh, so not a surprise there. And uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, no one's going to really want to gonna want to let Sebastian uh, go here. And one thing I think we really haven't touched on as well is 85 laps. A lot of guys, uh, you know, a lot of people are out there that are probably watching the stream right now are thinking, okay, you know, you know, all you got to do is just be perfect for 85 laps. That's not so easy. I mean, this is an endurance race in a lot of ways. I know we've covered, uh, I do believe we covered uh, the 24-hour uh, race uh, not long ago here for the major series. And that actually had driver changes and things like that. These guys don't have that. And uh, this is still about a two-hour race for a lot of these drivers. I mean, imagine uh, having to sit in the car for that long and focus and, and using muscles. Uh, you know, I, I would be sore after this race. And the, the longer and longer these guys go, the less focus, I'd say, and mental exhaustion they're going to start feeling. Well, if you think about it, the, the top level of this uh, style of racing is Formula One. And their races are capped at two hours. They say two hours is too long. A majority of Grand Prix are an hour and a half in the Formula One series. So uh, F4s were going to 30 minutes longer. And again, these cars are much slower. And ironically enough, in some ways, require, because they are slower and lighter, uh, require just that much more focus because there is so much lap time you can give up in these cars. They're truly momentum cars. It's not necessarily about uh about, about uh, setup or about how how uh, how strong your team is it's about how much momentum the driver can carry through the corners and uh that's what we're seeing right now sebastian jackson still not in the pits i think he's just come in according to timing and scoring so this is going to be the key right here can wayne hutchinson and wayne taylor can they gain on sebastian jackson uh, through the pit stop sequence. That's going to tell the story right here. Yeah, and I'm surprised he made it as long as he did. I mean, 32 laps, that's quite a bit of distance, uh, a little bit over our estimations. We had, we had heard uh, 25 to 30, so uh, that's very interesting. Here comes Rory Weatherington uh, as well coming down pit road. So I think we have a uh, replay here. So it looks Ooh. like some contact there. Chris Herring. So uh, that's some issues. And I think he just had come off of pit road, Herring did. Well, yeah, that's that's something I was just talking about earlier in the race. I told you that pit exit's going to be a major problem throughout this race. You just saw it there. Three cars getting caught up because someone got touched coming out of the pits. And so that's what Sebastian Jackson's going to be dealing with right now as he exits the pits and uh, comes out into big traffic. I mean, you talk about Long Beach traffic. <laughs> that's right there. Look at that right there. He was oh. He had came out of pit road, and one of the cars that was already on the track, I do believe, got into him there. And oh, then more contact there. Yeah, that was Mookie right there. That was, our, that was our big mover. So, yeah, I mean, that just goes to show you, you can have a great race and be caught up in somebody else's mess. And it uh, looks like Sebastian Jackson got out of the pits okay. Yeah, it looks so. like it. I mean, you can see the difference in, in, in well as lap times there. Sebastian Jackson was a minute 30 uh, seconds there. Compared to Chris Herring, he had a two-minute lap time because of that extra uh, little bit of time he lost there from that contact. The same thing uh, pretty much with Julian uh, Mookie there, uh, you know, minute 44 second lap. So, I mean, it just shows you how costly that could have been there. I mean, Julian was one of the biggest movers, and, and, and kind of that's probably taken up a lot of that momentum away and also add some frustration to the equation as well. So just uh, just to update the gaps right now because we were watching uh, how the pit sequence or cycle was going to cycle through. Our pair of Waynes are about uh, 20 seconds each behind. Uh, Wayne Hutchinson right now is exactly 20 seconds behind the leader. Wayne Taylor is 23 seconds behind. So at the moment, no real challenge, though. Jerry Isaacs, I, I think this is worth pointing out. Jerry Isaacs pitted just a little bit earlier. He was caught up 
in that accident earlier on in this race, in the hairpin. No fault of his own, but he knocked the front wing off of his race car. Well, now he's 6.7 seconds behind the leader, and he is gaining, albeit slightly, but he is gaining on Sebastian Jackson. He was one of the drivers running in that lead group, and he's up eight spots from the start. So we still have a challenger. He pitted a little bit earlier, so maybe needs to save some fuel before the end of this race. But, but I think there's still a chance we're going to have a little bit of a battle here in a few laps. Yeah, that's definitely very interesting. I mean, he's, he's turning some really, really fast laps right now. Minute 20.957 last time by. One of the fastest laps uh, that time. And uh, maybe them, all those colors are making him faster. He spent about five seconds in his box, and that was about 14 or so laps ago. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the math is going to be a little hard to make up. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe that uh, all those colors will maybe help him save some gas. <laughs> I think another really in important point to make about Jerry Isaacs is even before that accident in the hairpin, he had front wing damage. I mean, I think that was something we pointed out earlier on in the race. So uh, off the start, he was running at a disadvantage. And now that he's used his fast repair, I'm sure he didn't necessarily want to use it this early. But now that he's used it, he pitted a little bit earlier and he's running in, in completely clean air right now. Uh, I, I, there's a chance that he's going to be able to chase down Sebastian Jackson. Let's take a look at the uh, at the lap times right now. He actually run. He just ran a personal best lap, which is a 120.7. The best lap from uh, Sebastian Jackson is at a 20.66. So only four hundredths of a second uh, off of the best lap set by the leader and just for reference sake, he took a second, almost a second and a half out of uh, Sebastian Jackson on that last lap. Sebastian Jackson's last lap was a 121.9. And you can see in the long shot there, he is in lap traffic. So Isaacs is very much closing the gap right now. Oh, very much so. I mean, you, you see these guys enter uh, some of the parts of the racetrack and they, they can actually see each other. Uh, of course, Sebastian, like you said, is in traffic. He still is going to continue to be in traffic here he's in dirty air uh, of course jerry isaacs is going to as well in, enter that dirty air and and have to deal with the traffic as well but you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier as well that uh no one wants to let the leader go the same thing in nascar same thing in every discipline of racing no one wants to let the leader go because they that means that they're going to go a lap down i'd much rather oh and someone spins right in front of the leader there you go that's what and we got to be careful of jerry isaacs here because he's right in the middle of that mess uh he gained two seconds Two seconds on the last lap, a 122 to a 120.9 for uh, for uh, Isaac. So that is spectacular. But yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about right here. A lap car completely not involved in the race whatsoever spins right in front of the leader of the race. And in fact, comes back on track almost right in front of the second place driver. Yeah, could have easily backed uh, into the lane of, of traffic there. Luckily, that was not the case. I think they held the brake. So good job. At least they, they could have, uh, you know, backed up into that path that, that those guys were coming through. But that did uh, cause, I'm sure, a little bit of a heart, some heart palpitations for Sebastian Jackson. And uh, now 2.8 seconds separate him and Jerry Isaacs. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do a quick rundown through the top 10 uh, as it stands for Sebastian Jackson sits in that first uh, place position. Uh, Jerry Isaacs, who was involved in an accident a little bit ago, uh, of course, has uh, had quite the recovery. He is now just under now three seconds uh, on Sebastian Jackson. Third place, Wayne Hutchinson. He was as well involved in that accident earlier, but got away uh, somewhat scot-free. He sits in third. Uh, Wayne Taylor, so Battle of the Waynes here, third and fourth. Uh, Wayne Taylor sits in fourth. Uh, Rory Weatherson, Weatherington, I should say, is in fifth place. Uh, has had a quiet day so far. Has ran up in the top five a, a good bit. Uh, sixth place, Julian Muckey has been really the biggest mover of the race. Started outside of the top 20, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, uh, seventh place, Chris Herring has also had quite a uh, tumultuous day. Uh, of course, got involved in some traffic as well, uh, coming off of pit road. Uh, of course, eighth place, Bryce Roberts. Definitely a quiet day. Haven't really talked a whole lot about Bryce. Uh, so that's what you want to see at a road course, quiet day. Ninth place, of course, Clarence Rosa. Uh, and that 945, haven't talked about that driver as well. So that's what you want here to track like this. Of course, 10th uh, place, Ken Lung. Of course, uh, that's where you want to be in 10th. Uh, of course, I do believe possibly could go a lap down. It's about 45 seconds back from the leader. Uh, but, you know, that's a look at the top 10 there. Those are all on the lead lap. And uh, we are actually only have 12 that are on the lead lap at the moment. Yep. Uh, well, that's kind of what we expected. A lot of attrition and uh, a fairly spread out field. But... The gap at the front is closing in. Jerry Isaacs is closing the gap 
to Sebastian Jackson. Uh, we can see Jackson has cleared the lap traffic. We're going to see if Jerry Isaacs gets the same kind of courtesy from the lap cars. And indeed, we do still have a car, one car in between them. The gap now is uh, stabilized at three seconds. But here we go. We got a car exiting the pits. This could get a little bit hairy. Good, good driving from number 13. Uh, uh, that is, uh, who is that in number 13? Drew La LaDonda. That was, uh, that was really heads up stuff from him, but we've got a lot of lap traffic now. Two cars in front of Jerry Isaacs. This is not what he wants to see. No, and he's catching him at just the wrong time. I mean, that's one thing about road course racing. I think that is, uh, you know, really, uh, a veritable here that it depends on when you catch those lap traffic. If you catch them on the exit of the corner, that is the, the, the point you don't want to catch him. I mean, you really... Uh, would more probably like to catch them on the straightaway when you're already up to speed and you can kind of draft and slingshot around them, not on the exit when you're trying to build the momentum. He lost half a second just just to just to give you guys an idea of how much time he lost just from that one lap car being a little bit squirrely. Half a second. It's now the gap is now three, almost four seconds. He's lost a ton of time in traffic, and uh, that's that's a tough scene right there as uh, as uh, Isaacs tries to chase down Jackson for the lead. But again, we still have almost uh, just over half of the race to go. So plenty of time. No, 100%. I mean, he is uh, he's weathered the storm so far, right? I mean, he's been through, um, you know, already uh, quite a bit of trials here, has gotten involved in accidents, and still is going. So you got to give him credit for that. I mean, we're glad to see him still out here racing, and uh, I don't think this is going to, really uh, demotivate him, if you will. I think that he's still very much capable of catching uh, Sebastian. And, and I think Sebastian knows that Jerry's back there as well. I think that he's looking at his relative. And any time that, uh, you know, you get the leader looking at his relative, that that is an opportunity for him to make a mistake. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the footsteps, he's hearing them. I, I would be interested if we could bring back the marching ants onto the screen. Let's see what the traffic situation is here for Jackson and Isaacs over the next couple of laps. Uh, there's definitely a couple of cars up the road. It looks like fairly clean sailing. It looks like, for the most part, we've got two cars that they're going to have to deal with here in a couple of laps. But it's mano a mano. Uh, it's going to be mano a mano here for a couple of laps between Jackson and Isaacs. So the story is really going to be told not necessarily uh, from the lapped cars or the positioning of them, but the lap times between our two combatants. So we'll take a look over the next couple of laps to see what the gap is between our two leaders. Yeah, we are starting to see as well a battle starting to develop for that fifth place position. Uh, Roy Weatherington uh, is, is starting to get caught by Julian Mucky. This is kind of the driver that I've been rooting for. The underdog here uh, tonight, that 39 machine, has just been running some really incredibly fast laps. Last time by was about eight tenths faster than Rory, who's in front of uh, him. So I, I do believe Julian's probably going to get back up into the top ten. So good recovery there for the 39. Uh, also, a uh, uh, shout out to Ken Lung on the last lap, set the fastest lap of the race at a 120.2. Wow. That's easily the fastest lap of the race that we've seen today. So that's a really cool thing. I mean, again, this is a driver coming from the back. He's been involved in a few of the incidents earlier on in the race. But uh, that's a that's a statement right there. <laughs> that's a statement lap. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a qualifying lap right there. I mean, that's a fast lap. We were talking about. Uh, you know, whether we were going to see any lap times that were under a minute night or a minute 20. And we might if he keeps that up. I mean, that is incredibly fast. Seems like he has uh, definitely gotten that race car uh, feeling just right. Uh, maybe that's just from being out here uh, for a significant amount of time. Of course, the uh, track temp has gone down about a, a degree. Now, you talked about it earlier. I don't know if you want to touch on that again about how uh, at these street courses, specifically street courses, that as the track gets rubbered up, it starts to get faster. Do you think that's what's happening here? Yeah, 100%. Before the end of the race, you're going to have a ton. You're going to have 85 laps of rubber from 30 or so uh, F4 cars on this racetrack. So, yeah, the track grip's going to go up. It's going to get easier to stay in that groove. But, you know, the, the opposite uh, end of the spectrum there is that offline, it's a lot more dirty because there's just rubber all over the racetrack. So, uh, yeah, but, I mean, these are city streets, right? You don't have racing rubber on them all of the time. So, it's a very difficult prospect uh, when you start the weekend. The track's dusty, it's dirty. You've had road cars driving around it all, all year long just for one week a year for these streets to be shut down for race cars. So, you know, that that that's a big factor on these street circuits. And I think it's important as well that, uh, that the gap up front is beginning to close in. The last lap, we took four tenths 
Uh, Isaacs took four tenths out of Jackson up front. The gap is back to three seconds, and we've got lap traffic once again playing a factor in that. So, um, you know, I, I would imagine that uh, the Jackson caught the lap traffic in a bad spot, but it would certainly oh, oh, around right yeah, behind him. Yeah, the lap car in the wall hard. So that's going to help out Isaacs as long as he didn't get too spooked by that lap car. Uh, that's going to help him out a little bit as we see the replay here. Pretty straightforward uh, here. I suspect we're just going to see a rear lockup and a, and a big impact into the tire wall. I do believe that was Damian uh, Colty there in the 34 machine. Locks it up. Oh, there goes the rear wing. And uh, good thing if you were in the uh, in real life and that uh, that wing had came off of that race car in front of Isaacs, that could have easily damaged Isaacs' car. And I, I can tell you, as someone who races a lot of open wheel stuff in iRacing, uh, you can still hit debris and it can still damage your car. So you got to be real careful uh, with that sort of stuff sometimes. But yeah, lucky escape for Isaacs there. But unfortunately, yeah, he did get a little bit spooked by that crash, lost a second. And, uh, you know, it just seems like he can't get over that three second threshold. He gets to three seconds and then something happens and he and he loses uh, track position a little bit there. Again, though, it seems like we're in clean air once again for our two leaders. So mano a mano between Jackson and Isaacs and Isaacs is closing the gap. I mean, he is faster lap to lap. He's been able to be consistently faster than Jackson. And yet Jackson continues to hang on to the lead as we are rapidly approaching the halfway mark in this race as i saw a little bit of movement uh further down the field looks like uh J julian uh, mookie has moved up to the fifth spot so up 23 positions for the australian driver and looks like we're gonna have a replay too yeah i do believe this is a replay of him possibly making the pass uh, on rory weatherington of course chris chris herring uh, live right now, just went a lap down. I think we're probably going to have another replay for us as we see Julian uh, making that pass. Very classic uh, move there. Um, made it look easy, as I do believe we are going to see uh, Chris Herring having a big issue here as he goes wide and ooh, into the tires and then into the wall. And I do believe he possibly might be taking a toe or something because he went a lap down here very quickly. He comes to a stop on the racetrack and does end up taking a toe. So I think he might uh, have uh, hit the his limit here tonight as we have already crossed the halfway point of tonight's race as well so there you go halfway done halfway to go uh the leader the lead uh, gap continues to stabilize actually it's now down under three seconds 2.9 is the gap jerry isaacs is closing in on sebastian jackson and, you know, without more lap traffic, which it looks like at least for a couple of laps, that's not going to be an issue. Jerry Isaacs may very well be in contention for this as we've got a car in the pit lane. And that looks like a terminal accident. Yeah, taking a look at it, I think it's Don uh, Dolson here who was uh, in that fifth place or 15th place oh, position. Got a car oh, got a car there. right there. So I think that might have spooked a zero for Don. So who was that there uh, on the, that's, in the corner there? It's the same car that crashed down there at uh, off the of seaside, I Coltley. believe. Yeah. That's Not a good and Coltley again. So really tough five minutes there. Yeah, yeah. Tough, tough five minutes for him as he just loses it uh, on the drift rubber there, coming into the hairpin. That's easy to do, believe it or not. That's a double apex uh, corner, deceptively difficult. Uh, to set up for the uh, for the hairpin, the famous hairpin at Long Beach. I got to give him uh, some credit, though. I got to give Damien some credit there. He, he gassed it up and got out of the racing group. Yes, 100%. Yeah, you love to see that because we have seen some examples earlier on in today of, of drivers not really respecting the fact that there's other drivers out there when they've had an accident. You know, it takes every bit of your awareness as a race car driver to not just drive right back out into traffic after you've had a, 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 an issue or an accident like that because, uh, you know, you want to get back out and compete again. But you have to remember that there are guys, uh, you know, you have to think about what would I want if I were in the position of the guys that haven't spun out. And that is to try to not drive into traffic and cause another or bigger accident. And once again, the gap is back out to four seconds. So Isaacs just can't get close to Jackson. I think uh, I think Sebastian just got like a force field or something <laughs> that keeps uh, Jerry from getting too close. Because, I mean, every time we look, uh, you know, Jerry's turning very fast laps. But 
I almost feel like the consistency has transferred to Sebastian Jackson. Like that, that, that Jackson has been a lot more consistent than Jerry Isaacs. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see. If, if Jerry can kind of get it together here, he's got the speed. We know he's fast enough. But, I mean, even last time by, you see how uh, slow that lap was. A minute 22.812 versus Sebastian Jackson's 121.319. Uh, so that's that's going to be something we have to keep in mind, and, and also keep in mind as well. Jerry is on a different pit strategy here, and not by uh, choice really. It was my necessity when he was involved in that accident earlier. He's probably going to end up having to pit sooner rather than later. Yeah, he he's bleeding time right now. It's almost five seconds. I, I don't know what's going on. I assume it's it. You, you'd have to think it's probably tires, but uh, I don't think he pitted that much earlier. Um, than the leader so I, I don't know I guess we'll have to see so yeah about 12 laps difference there between Jackson and Isaacs and I guess this will tell the tale I mean he's not he's not driving for the pit lane I'm wondering if you know what it very well could be uh David is he saving gas because see maybe the mask not uh, gonna work yep that that's a very astute observation um maybe you think if you're uh if you're Isaacs you have an opportunity here You've got he's got 20 seconds or 25 seconds on third place right now. So you don't have to worry about that right now uh, in terms of losing another spot on the podium as we've got a replay. Maybe we're going to learn something. Ah. Yes, yeah, so so this is the crash from earlier which uh, caused the pit stop earlier. You can see there was already damage to this number 51 car and he just got balked there. Didn't actually make contact with uh, with the initial accident, but when he backed up, we just talked about respecting uh, the competitors. That's tough around a blind corner. He backed up into it, caused a much bigger crash. But the advantage was, and he actually made another lap, which is kind of crazy. I wonder if he if he had just gone into the pits, what kind of a gap we'd be seeing between Jackson and Isaacs right now. But yeah, that was a that was a tough a tough situation. But it has ended up. Uh, benefiting him right now with the second place run and he is beginning to gain once again i mean the gap is now four seconds and that was up to almost six on the previous lap so that's thing, pretty wild one thing that's different in, uh that that you know from real life to, to i'd say this i mean uh you know you see in real life these guys don't have like a fuel gauge essentially uh here these guys can kind of pull up uh, on their black box and show oh i got this many estimated laps left on the tank so, that, you know, they can kind of ebb and flow. Like, I'll, I'll take a, a really fast lap this lap, and then I'll save this next lap. So maybe that's something he's looking at. He's looking at, uh, you know, the, the fluctuating uh, estimated laps he has left to try to do that math. And, and like you said, if he's by himself, a lot of these guys do have crews that are maybe behind them. Some drivers don't. Depending on if Jerry Isaacs has some guys in there doing some number crunching, he might be hearing some information in his head as well. Yep, exactly. Uh, that's that's the sort of thing is we got another spin for Chris Herring. I mean, boy, he's having a tough Tough day today. There's no doubt about it. And there's another toe. Um, so, yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, but, you know, the big thing, like, you know, the difference between the black box and iRacing and, and real life is that uh, while you have the access to that information in your virtual race car here, you know, if this was a real life race, you'd have a crew chief on the pit box telling you what your fuel number is and what you need to hit. So really not that much different if you think about it. But I'll tell you what. Our two leaders are right in the same uh, in the same camera shot. Now, I wonder, I wonder if Sebastian Jackson maybe is saving fuel as well. I wonder if we have two cars uh, saving fuel, but frankly, I don't think they are. It's a six tenth difference. Both drivers in the one twenty one range, uh, lap time wise, on the last lap, Isaac's faster than Jackson, so uh, maybe he just needed to save one lap of fuel there, and now it's uh, right back to hammer time, so to speak for uh for uh jerry isaacs we do have a really good battle going on right now here for third place wayne hutchinson and wayne taylor battle of the waynes battle for third is going on right now as they are about uh you know they were a tenth behind each other they are really starting to heat a uh, battle up you see that uh the coming off of the back of that dog bear race car uh so i think this is going to be a good race to watch i think wayne taylor uh is a little bit faster he was almost a tenth faster that lap time that last time by Yep, all over the back of him. We talk about the footsteps. He's uh, definitely hearing the footsteps right now. Actually got three fast cars here. I mean, obviously, uh, Billy's way off the pace in terms of the race, but we know that's a fast race car. So from a traffic standpoint, uh, really not uh, not in favor of Wayne Hutchinson right now. He's 
he's in a not very advantageous place because you got a fast car creating dirty air in front of you, and you've got Wayne Taylor absolutely breathing down your neck behind you. Uh, this could be interesting if Wayne Taylor can get a run on him, but uh, the gap is right now just kind of fluctuating just under a second, uh, anywhere from three-tenths to seven-tenths of a second, depending on where they are on the racetrack. Yeah, definitely. It seems like one driver may be stronger in certain areas than the other. Um, you can see uh, coming through that last corner there, turn 11, you can see Wayne Hutchinson definitely protecting the bottom. He's not really letting uh, you know Wayne Taylor get underneath him uh, there as they're now in that drafting portion of the racetrack. You see uh, Wayne Taylor trying to maybe look underneath, not able to get there. So I think we have a replay queued up here. As uh, I do believe Ken Lung, who was uh, set at the fastest lap of the race, uh, might have had an issue here, possibly. Ken Lung has been turning lap times consistently uh, in the 120 range. So I, I don't know why exactly we're seeing him, but I think it's worth Okay, well, we can give we can definitely give him credit because he's consistently been one of the fastest drivers on this racetrack right now. Uh, definitely a slow car in front of him. That's that's a tough scene right there. That's what you don't want to see, uh, especially in that corner, turn number five. That's one of the tightest corners on this racetrack, one of the most deceptively difficult. We've seen so many drivers hitting the wall on the outside of that turn. And for Lung, who is absolutely on the button right now, I mean, he is turning up the heat, uh, coming from the back. But I'll tell you what, he's in seventh spot right now, and he's chasing down the drivers that are in front of him right now. So uh, a good run, but uh, but a tough, a tough day for him uh, getting off to a bad start. I don't think it's over for him, though. I mean, he might not win this race, but he very well uh, could have a podium or even a top five. Uh, for himself. I mean, he's lap times, he's running two seconds faster than uh, the guys that are in front of him. Two seconds. I mean, that is incredible to be running yeah. that much faster. And uh, of course, he did get held up that last time by, but even though he got held up, he was still faster uh, by a second than the guy ahead of him, the 43 Aurora uh, Weatherington. So I suspect, I mean, we're going to see Ken battling for sixth place soon. Maybe even get up to Julian uh, Mucky. I don't know. I mean, that, that's kind of a little bit more of a stretch considering I do believe the, the gap between. Those two drivers are is a little bit long, uh, bigger, uh, but I do I still think it's in the realm of possibility. We got enough time left. I mean, if he's taking two seconds out of these guys' gaps, that's that is going to make those gaps go away uh, fairly quickly. For sure, for sure. Uh, about 15 seconds uh, separate him from a top five finish. But I don't think that you know, looking at his current lap times, I don't think that's uh, outside of the realm of possibility. And it is with within one second for Lung to pass, pass Weatherington. Uh, I should point out, since we're looking at Sebastian Jackson, he has begun to turn some pretty, well, I was going to say he turned some pretty fast laps. He did a 120.7 two laps ago, but now this lap, he's back down to a 122.1. So again, we see the inconsistency of Jackson, and yet Isaacs, unable to capitalize, still just hanging around that four-second mark. You know what, though? He's been consistently leading laps. He's led almost every lap here today. I mean, he has been, uh, he's, you know, he's been fluctuating quite a bit. I, I, I agree to that. But, man, he has been uh, staying up here in the front this whole entire time. Uh, but, of course, I will admit, we talk about Isaac, you know, about that four-second gap. Isaac is going to have to pit soon. He's going to, he's at about 30 laps now on his stint. Uh, fuel was getting very low in that race car, and he's not getting faster. I think it's because he's saving fuel. Uh, but we'll have to definitely see how that all kind of plays out as we see the uh, pit strategies kind of up on our screen right now uh, before we get to those pit stuff. So I think now is the perfect time to go ahead and take a step away and uh, pay some attention to our sponsors. We'll be right back with the uh, last few laps, or not, or should I say the last 30 or so laps here uh, on the Major Series on Grid Vision. Hey, you know that guy who just before the green flag keys up his mic and asks, anybody got a setup? Well, this is him. This is Adam, and hey... Adam needs some help. On the other hand, this guy over here, this is Steve. Steve is a solid racer and he knows his way around the garage. Steve's problem is time. With a job and a family, he can't find enough time to build competitive setups and to race as often as he likes. But as luck would have it, Steve knows a secret. He lets the Majors Garage crew chiefs do the setup work so he can focus on the racing. At MajorsGarage.com, Steve can get setups for over 60 cars on the iRacing service. 
So no matter what series he wants to jump into, he is covered. Somebody, anybody, really should tell Adam. See you at the garage. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Grid Vision's presentation of the Long Beach Grand Prix here. We've had the Formula 4s going around Long Beach for 55 laps so far. Of course, my name is Brian Britt. I have David Land as my co-commentator. Co of course, Austin Derbyshire is doing a fantastic job behind the cameras. And i got to say, David, it's been a pleasure to call this race here with you. Of course, I do believe we have some uh, replays queued up. I think we saw Ken Lung actually make a pass, I do believe, on Rory Weatherington. And also, Jerry Isaacs has gone down pit road. Yep, this was the big uh, pass for position. Uh, obviously, uh, well, there you go. We just pulled, <laughs> pulled, pulled to the side and uh, and let Lung go. That's uh, that's some sportsmanship there for sure. But uh, the race right now, a as we have it, uh, and and we're, we're we were furiously in the in the commercial break trying to calculate pit strategy, fuel strategy. Uh, we think Jerry Isaacs can make it to the end, and not only make it, but can go flat out. He's made it to that 30, uh, that 30, the magic 30 lap mark. So we think this is going to be now a battle between Jerry Isaacs and Sebastian Jackson. Jackson has typically stretched the fuel much longer than anyone else in this field. But uh, considering the fact that Jackson went 32 laps on that first stint and is looking very much like he's going to do it again, I think we're expecting... These two drivers are going to be in uh, locked in uh, combat here before the end of this race. This is exactly kind of what you want to see. You want to see two different strategies converging on each other at the end of the race. And what a recovery 
for Jerry Isaacs. Uh, not only having damage earlier in the race, but also getting caught up in the uh, collision, the major collision we had down at the hairpin. Uh, if he can pull off this thing, uh, challenging Sebastian Jackson, who has been untouchable this entire race, I think we are looking at a very exciting conclusion to this thing. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Jackson took the lead on the first lap, essentially has led uh, the majority of the laps thus far. No one has been able to touch him, but, I mean, Jerry Isaacs, no fault of his own, was involved in that accident as well. I mean, he did a really good job, you know, coming out of that uh, that final ele uh, turn 11. That's a really hard corner to judge when an accident's happened, and he stopped and was able to avoid hitting the guys in front of him. Of course, he did get hit in the rear end, uh, and, and still has been able to recover to be even in the talking uh, points about possibly winning this race. I mean, he pitted uh, on the he's on the pit strategy that he's on by necessity. He was pretty much forced uh, to, to to pit the way he's been doing. I think he's been saving a little bit of gas in that last stint, and now he uh, could possibly make it to the end uh, without having to save him. I and mean, I remember uh, we were talking about under the commercial break that Sebastian Jackson made it about 32 laps and did not seem like he was saving. Uh, could Jerry be the same way? Now, one thing I talked about a little bit earlier about this being open setup series, that also changes things as well. Could Sebastian Jackson be maybe running a different fuel uh, gear ratio or something like that that could cause him to save a little bit more fuel? Is Jerry maybe running something different as well? I think that's a talking point as well. You know, a lot of times when the gear ratios can uh, can change fuel dynamics. Well, this is, this is a huge moment right here in the race because Sebastian Jackson just ran his fastest lap of the race, a 120.5. Wow. I think this is going to be it. This is going to be when he comes into the pits. In open wheel racing, you want to run a fast in lap and a fast out lap. That's how you maximize these pit stops. I think he's been saving fuel. I think everyone's been saving just a little bit. The, 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 the leash is off right now. Sebastian Jackson is absolutely going for it. And I would be very, uh, I would expect a pit stop very soon here. I don't think he just turned up the wick for no reason. I think he's trying to maximize the gap between him and Isaacs. I think he knows that Isaacs is fast. And uh, and here you go, maybe looking for the pits. No, he just ran a, he just ran an extremely fast lap. So 120.5 on the last lap. This lap, as he comes across the line, much slower. 121.7. And that is comparative to Jerry Isaac's 121.2. I don't know where a second came from for Sebastian Jackson, but there it was. But at least as things stand, I mean, assuming, of course, that Sebastian Jackson can't just start ripping off 120.5s, uh, I think there's going to be, I think Isaacs is going to close down the gap. Remember, prior to the pit stop for Jerry Isaacs, the gap was stabilized around four seconds. So if he can take a second out of Jackson a lap, we're going to have a, a hell of a battle for the win here. 100%. Wayne Hutchinson just came down pit road. He was, of course, pitted, I do believe, from the second place position. That puts Wayne Taylor up to that second spot. Of course, uh, the race is starting to tighten up between Julian Muckey and Ken Lung. Now about three-tenths separate these two drivers. Yeah, Lung has been so, so fast. He's been uh, consistently running in the 120 bracket and he's been the only driver who's been that consistent uh, uh mucky has been so good this this race but he's not going to want to give it up for fifth and he knows that lung is way faster lets him by easily and now ken lung here, here's the other question can raw pace how much ground can raw pace make up remember he is right now 39 seconds behind the lead but sebastian jackson has to pit as does ken lung how far up this grid can he make it? He's only 11 seconds behind Wayne Taylor. And if we do some quick math, if he's a second to two seconds a lap faster, he's definitely going to be on the podium at least before the end of this race. Yeah, 100%. I think that uh, easily. And he, uh, I imagine if he had qualified better and actually started up towards the front of the field, I think Ken Long would be uh, easily a contender for the win here. But uh, got to also come... Uh, knock it back to Sebastian uh, Jackson. Once again, just hit his fastest lap of the race, 120.415. When is this guy coming down pit road? Because he's running some heaters. And I like what I'm seeing, though. I think he, like you said, I think he knows that Jerry Isaacs is possibly uh, going to contend with him. He's trying to make sure that does not happen. Well, going fast is the best way to, to make sure that you win the race is, uh, as we got to... 
Billy uh, Bowerman once again uh, having some issues. I mean, he was so fast earlier in the race. Oh, that was a t close one. Ah, oh. and he got the rear wing. Well, <laughs> I thought he got the rear wing, but I think, uh, uh, okay, guys, that's the proof. We live in a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> At least in the world of iRacing, we live in a simulation. But uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's why. And you, I'll tell you what. Here's what's crazy about Sebastian Jackson. He's back in the 121s. It's a little bit faster than he typically runs. It's a 121 dead, but uh, six tenths of a second swing between his best lap the last time by and his last lap. Got some lap traffic both in front and behind him. But uh, looking at Jerry Isaacs, the lap speeds are still not there. He just did a 121.1, but he still would have lost one-tenth of a second to Sebastian Jackson on that last go-around. So uh, if we're going to have a battle for the lead, uh, uh, Jerry Isaacs is going to have to uh, kick it in gear here. Now, I mean, I think that he can do it. I mean, knowing uh, Jerry Isaacs, I think that he's just uh, maybe – making sure that he can make it. I mean, we already talked about how uh, he could be a little bit tight on fuel. Ooh. Maybe he is uh, not pushing it quite as hard. And also, he's got a full tank of gas. That's the big thing, I think, that's changing uh, his speed right now. It, it, once the gas starts to uh, kind of drain out of that race car, I think he's going to really start to turn those laps again. And uh, Ken Lung still just knocking heaters out of the park every lap. This guy is going to possibly catch up and maybe get up in, into third, like you said, on the podium. Could he even have a chance at battling with Jerry Isaacs? We'll just have to see if Ken Lung uh, can have a good pit stop. I think that's going to be the important thing. Last time by minute 20.532. This guy has been insanely consistent. Yeah, two seconds a lap faster than Wayne Taylor on the last lap. In fact, Wayne is in the pits. So uh, Ken Lung is going to move into the second spot, though we'll see how long he actually stays there but uh nonetheless uh no matter how you do it if you pass him in the pits or you pass him on track uh you're still passing him and he's still like you say knocking down just extremely consistent fast laps of 120.5 on the last one by i think that's a really good point about isaacs and maybe that's another disadvantage that isaacs has is He's got a full tank of fuel in his Formula 4 car, and Sebastian Jackson right now is not racing with that disadvantage. He's got a, a nice empty tank of fuel where he can just run with a very light car and warm tires and uh, run up at the front. But on the last lap, still the gap seven-tenths of a second between the last two laps, a 121.2 for Sebastian Jackson, a 121.9. And in fact, Sebastian Jackson back into the 120 range at a 120.7. So uh, I would say Sebastian Jackson, as we stand right now, is doing everything he needs to do to secure a victory here at Long Beach. Yeah, I think he definitely is as we come to, I do believe, 23 laps to go here when he crosses the line next time by. Now, I, there still could be that a lot can go wrong here. I mean, I don't think it's all said and done here for Sebastian. Keep in mind, Green flag pit stops, that is a huge veritable that uh, I don't know if I'd want to, uh, you know, it, it, things go wrong, very wrong there. You can get a speeding penalty. You can end up locking up the brakes, hit the wall. As I do believe we just saw Julian uh, Mucky actually just pop down pit road. That's going to put Jerry Isaacs up now to third place. As you see Mucky uh, actually completing his stop. Yep, that, that was expected. We're seeing all the final pit stops of the day. Uh, we're still expecting Lung to come into the pits at some point, Weatherington to come in, Bryce Roberts as well. Uh, so this will all cycle out. I think we're expecting that Lung will probably come out uh, third. Wayne Taylor will probably come out of the pits fourth. And uh, and Julian Mookie will come out in the number five spot once it all cycles through. Uh, we have uh, – how many cars do we have on the lead lap? I believe it is nine, ten cars on the lead lap right now. So – uh, Sebastian Jackson has done his best to carve up through the field. Not a fast lap on the last one for Sebastian Jackson. Down into the 1 minute 22 second range as Jerry Isaacs is running at the 121s. Uh, just the, just below a 121 uh, lap at 121.9. So uh, uh, not really sure why Sebastian Jackson doesn't appear to have had any lapped traffic in his way. Uh, just not quite. And now there will be lap traffic, as we can see here on the, the screen. Two cars, in fact. Maybe, and I'll tell you this, if he still needs to make a stop, it probably would be in his best interest, as you can see, based on the marching ants. Uh, 
I would make my stop right now. Uh, I would not take any chances in, in carving through that lap traffic if you don't have to do it. And if your lap times are starting to fall off a little bit and you can, you know you can make it with 23 laps to go, he did 32 laps on the first stint, this would be the time, if I'm Sebastian Jackson, that I come in, I make my final stop, and I cruise to victory. Yeah, I mean, maybe if there's even uh, maybe some wiggle room when it comes to how much gas you take as well, uh, you know, to kind of limit as much, uh, you know, to not spend as much time on pit road. Um, I do want to mention there's only, uh, there's not any drivers that are actually just one lap down. Uh, the, the first car is actually, uh, that is a lap down, is actually two laps down. That's Clem Timothy uh, Klaus. And, of course, uh, Jason Lotridge, I do believe, actually just exited the vehicle. So just want to talk about that. Timothy Klaus uh, now moves up to that 11th place position. Uh, just a heads up there. Uh, we don't want to, uh, you know, neglect those guys that are still out there racing. And you talk about, you know, not a lot of lap traffic. Well, there's not a lot, a lot, a lot of drivers that are really still in the game here. I mean, they're, a lot of them have given up. They've had too much damage. I mean, it's, it's an 85-lap race. I'm surprised, to be honest, that we have as many as we do still out here. Yeah, there's a, I don't know if we're going to see it, but there's actually a battle for position for the number eight spot between Clarence Rosa and Richard McClure that I think uh, would be worth watching. Yeah, here you go. And I think these are two drivers that are fairly close to Jackson on the racetrack. So you want to talk about, and I don't want to do commentator's curse here, but sometimes when you have these guys who are running towards the back, who are battling for position, if they get into each other, and we've seen the chain reaction crashes here at Long Beach take out other drivers, and there's nothing saying that these two could crash and Sebastian Jackson could be an innocent bystander. As you see, the speed here on Shoreline Drive, over 130, almost 140 miles an hour as they break down into the first corner. Yeah, definitely very fast there and uh, very easy to, to blow through that corner. And when you blow through a corner here at Long Beach, there's a wall waiting on you there. And uh, we saw Rory Weathering. Uh, as well come down pit road he is now uh, back into 10th place i think he's barely going to be able to stay uh, on the lead lamp here as we continue to watch this battle here for richard mcclure of course uh, both of these drivers have, have survived well uh you know definitely glad to see them uh, staying alive i think that's what has been the main uh, priority in this race has been to stay alive i mean to to, to be here and uh, to still have a working race car as we come to 20 to go oh big moment here here's sebastian jackson in the pits uh, for his final pit stop. So the, the pit stop has finally been made. Ken Lung goes into the lead, but now Jerry Isaacs. This is it right here. Coming out of the pits for the blend, and he got him! Wow, Jerry Isaacs is going to be the net leader right now. Can Sebastian Jackson answer and maybe try to run him down? The gap right now, two point, uh, actually three seconds Right now, Sebastian Jackson still trying to get up to speed. Now, Ken Lung, of course, we know that that driver still has to come down pit road. Sebastian Jackson has led the majority of this race. It led almost 60 laps of this event so far. Does he lead the last 20, or is it Jerry Isaacs? Man, what a huge moment. We, we, we kind of thought that that might happen. I'm amazed, though. Jackson was running such good laps. Somehow, Jerry Isaacs has managed to put together the perfect strategy here, and and really, through no fault of his own, he got wrecked. I mean, this is a car that has gone from wrecked to the effective lead of the race. Of course, Ken Lung still leading, uh, getting credit for the laps led right now. But Jerry Isaacs, I, I'm telling you, we are about to have a heck of a battle here because Sebastian Jackson definitely closing in, and we definitely have lap traffic that is going to be a factor in this battle. And I can tell you the facts, uh, the details on why Jackson lost the lead there. He spent 11.3 seconds in his box, 52.4 seconds in pit lane. That was 12 seconds more than Jerry Isaacs did. Oh, my god! So even all that time that he was running so good on the racetrack went away because of you know spending too long on pit lane. And he almost got into the wall in turn one. He almost hit the wall on the exit of turn one. That was extremely wide. He's pushing now. And we talked about it at the top of the show, pit lane delta. That was going to be the difference in this race. But here's the thing. What is the fuel situation? Did Jerry Isaac short fill his car? Is he running lighter? And will he have to save? Will he have to pit again? Is he trying to force Jackson into a mistake by running quick and kind of making Jackson 
question where his pace went because we just saw a mistake in turn one from Sebastian Jackson. Now he, the, the race is totally flipped on its head. Jackson is now the chaser, not the defender. Can't He hasn't been in this position the entire race. No one has challenged him. And now, now that he has a challenge, can he rise to meet it? That's a good question. I mean, he lost about a second uh, on that mistake there for sure. So he's going to try to maybe even a second and a half. Can he possibly work his way up to Jerry Isaacs? Uh, a lot of times when you're in a position like this where you've been the king all race long and now you're not, a lot of times you fold to something like that. I mean, you're, it's almost like, uh, you know, being in clean air for the entire race and then going into dirty air. You're not used to driving like that, right? Absolutely not. And and now the shoe is on the other foot in a lot of ways because now we see that, that dreaded four-second gap rear its ugly head, and now Jackson is the one on the other end of it, as, as we should mention that Ken Lung uh, made his pit stop. So now Jerry Isaacs is the leader of the Long Beach Grand Prix with 19 laps to go. But, but 19 laps at this racing circuit, that is an eternity. And I'll tell you what, there's a heck of a battle right now for the number three spot. R Wayne Hutchinson, Wayne Taylor, and Ken Lung are all together. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. I'm, a, I'm excited to watch this. Excited to watch this. It's a 17, the 564, and the 37, all right here, right on top of each other here. This is going to be exciting. I mean, of course, we saw Wayne, the Battle of the Waynes, a little bit earlier. Now, uh, you know, invite Ken to it. Now, we talked about Ken. Could he possibly get a podium finish here? This is where we're going to determine that. Of course, he came out of pit road essentially right where these guys are. He's been showing uh, the best pace, pace pretty much all race long. Can he work his way up to the podium? I mean, this guy has been having a stellar day. Uh, I almost wish he had qualified better because I think he would be the one that's up there battling with Isaacs and uh, Jackson. Well, if you're Ken Lung right now, you got to keep your head on Whoa, straight. There, that was a can... problem. Well, that I was just about to say. You have so much pace over the guys ahead of you. Be patient. You have 19 laps to go. And the minute I say it, he runs into the back of Wayne Taylor. Uh, that didn't need to happen. I'll tell you that. That was very unfortunate because I'll tell you, Ken Lung had a third place in the bag. He had so much pace, and this was an optimistic move, to say the least, in the hairpin. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could see that, of course, uh, Taylor had went a little bit wide there and, and opened the door just a hair for Ken. And I think Ken just dove into it, and unfortunately the door closed before he was able to make a move there. And that's just not the place to try to pass someone. It's a very slow speed corner. I mean, you essentially have to try to wide arc that corner. And, you know, that door's going to close when you're trying to go underneath. So we're going to take a look through the, uh, of course, roof camera here. As you see, the door opens and just a little bit of contact wing on wing and uh, some other traffic coming into this as well. Luckily, this whole track uh, didn't turn into uh, kind of a cluster there. That could have been a, a bad deal there if we had a bunch of cars wrecked right there. Yeah, that that was, uh, you know, that was very reminiscent of a move we saw uh, Ed Jones put on Pato Award at one of the uh, previous runnings of the Long Beach Grand Prix. You know, you, 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 there's a rule in open wheel racing. If you can get alongside it, we're seeing a replay here of our, le our, our second place man, Sebastian Jackson. So what could have possibly happened here at the hairpin? When, oh, my goodness. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, boy. And you know what? That Did I just mention that? I believe that was the McClure... A Bryce Roberts battle. Uh, do we have a replay of this now that we're still with Sebastian Jackson? But I, I just mentioned that Bryce Roberts and Richard McClure were racing really, really hard with each other. Oh, he spins. He spun at turn one. Sebastian Jackson has thrown away this race. I mean, that's it. Two mistakes. And, and I want, well, the first one wasn't a mistake. He, he did lock up at the hairpin, but there was a car backwards. And in turn one, he locked the rear tires, trying to chase down Jerry Isaacs. And, and if he got away with this, oh, man. Yeah, he didn't hit anything, but that's that's a tough scene right there for Sebastian Jackson pushing too hard. We talked about the, the challenges of being the guy chasing rather than the guy uh, leading. And um, he didn't rise to meet the challenge. And, and Ken Long is still all over the back of Wayne Taylor. But this is just that. What a tough what a tough break for Sebastian Jackson. Dominant in this race. It doesn't look like at the moment that he's going to win it. That's like uh, one of my one of my best buddies always says, you got to run all the laps. I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, even though he, he has led the majority of this race, 
it all comes down to who wins it. No one's going to remember who led all the laps. They're going to remember who crossed the line first. And Jerry Isaacs, of course, looks like he's in the prime position to do that. Of course, still things could go wrong. I mean, who, who's to say Isaacs doesn't get comfortable, too comfortable, and make a mistake himself? I mean, uh, you know, it, it's very easy uh, to kind of have that sigh of relief and maybe not pay as much attention to what you're doing. Yeah, that was uh, that's that's the the story of the race. And look at this a battle between Ken Lung and Wayne Taylor, and of course, Lung's car very heavily damaged from that optimistic move in the hairpin. Certainly not got the front grip that he had in the past, but he is still all over the back of Wayne Taylor. I wonder if he blames him a little bit for that incident. And I'll tell you what, Wayne now knows that if he opens the door, uh, he's not going to be able to shut it because they're going to have contact and this could get ugly here as they head down Seaside Way. Yeah, you see Ken getting a little bit of under or oversteer there off of that corner. And you could tell that Wayne knows that Ken's there. And he's like, no, I'm not letting you go. I mean, you, you almost wrecked me. These guys are short track racing here at Long Beach. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> well, we talked oh, well, about it. Ken. Oh, he's going to oh. slide it. I what think the drift save. competition's on another day, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean what a save. That, that, was, that was some skill right there. I mean, that's, that shows you how damaged that race car is. He's driving like he used to drive where, you know, he has all the grip. And the thing, the thing stepped away from him there. We've seen that with other drivers earlier in today's race. But uh, Ken Lung, I mean, this guy's talented. He saved that car, kept it off of the wall, and he's going to continue on, continue to chase Wayne Taylor. But I'll tell you what, the beneficiary of this battle is that Wayne Hutchinson right now is uh, pretty easily in podium contention. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, because, uh, you know, Ken was much faster than, than both of the Waynes. And, and, you know, because Ken got into Taylor, uh, that really saved Hutchinson. I mean, he, he was kind of – he's having a little bit of a breath of fresh air himself. He's got about 5.4 uh, seconds that separate him and uh, Wayne Taylor. Uh, but still, I would not count uh, Ken Lung out at all. But if these guys continue to battle, if they get close enough to, to each other again and uh, Wayne Taylor keeps throwing blocks like he's been doing, this could bring Julian Mucky back up into the top five as well. I mean – of course, he's, he is almost nine seconds back behind Ken Lung, but, I mean, don't count the 39 out. He's been the biggest mover all race. Fastest lap of the race, Sebastian Jackson, 120.1. Uh, this story may not be over. He is flying right now. Yeah, second faster last time uh, by Jerry Isaacs. I think that, you know, I think he was shook for a second there, David. I think that he got a little bit, uh, you know, shook, maybe a little bit demotivated, a little bit rattled if you will, but I think that he has decided, like, hey, I'm going to dig deep. I'm going to try to do what I can here and gain this time back, and if he keeps running a second faster, he might well as well do it. Oh, absolutely. With 14 laps to go and a six-second gap and closing rapidly, uh, it doesn't take a mathematician to tell you when he's going to catch him. Uh, but, of course, catching and passing are very different things, and we have yet to see a straight-up knockdown, drag-out battle for the lead during this thing. It's all been pit strategy. So if Sebastian Jackson catches Jerry Isaacs, the question is going to be how wide does that multicolored 51 car get? And will there be contact? And if there is, hey, guess what? The battle for third, which has been so hot between Wayne Hutchinson, Wayne Taylor, and Ken Lung, that is going to suddenly become the battle for the lead. So maybe we're going to see uh, Wayne, uh, <laughs> Ken Lung, still have an opportunity to win this thing uh, it just depends how close the competition is going to be. Uh, Sebastian Jackson again in the 120s, half a second slower than he was on the last lap, but at 120.6, he is still gaining uh, four tenths of a second a lap on Jerry Isaacs. Yeah, I mean he's definitely catching up here as we come to uh, 12 laps to go. I mean this definitely is this is heated it back up. I have written off Sebastian Jackson. But uh, this guy, I mean, he, he led the majority of the race for a reason. And uh, we saw him able to hit those minute 20s uh, earlier and, you know, wasn't very consistent. I think now he's probably going to be uh, being a lot more consistent here. 5.5 seconds is the gap. Now, uh, you got to think, though, that Jerry Isaacs is also seeing this, uh, you know, relative in this all uh, this sudden burst of speed from Sebastian. How does he respond? Does he respond with faster laps? Because we know that also Jerry Isaacs is capable of hitting fast laps as well, but maybe not a minute 20.1, which is insanely fast uh, from the 87. 
Well, there you go. Lap traffic is going to be a factor, and that oh, is no. a tough place. That is a really tough place to catch a lap car coming off the hairpin because this is the longest straight on the racetrack. Shoreline Drive, such a famous shot in racing, but that lap car is going to make an easy work for Jerry Isaacs, but I think the damage was already done. You can already see the gap's under five seconds now for Sebastian Jackson, but of course, every lap car that Jerry Isaacs passes, Sebastian Jackson is also going to have to navigate. So just because that gap closes in in the lap traffic doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a net gain over the course of the rest of the race for Sebastian Jackson. However, that being said, Sebastian Jackson at a 120.7, still almost a second a lap faster than Jerry Isaacs. It looks like we have another issue here. Billy Bowerman. I mean, this guy was incredibly fast earlier. and just seems like he, same area too. Yeah, that was the exact, exact same. same place that he had an issue earlier. He locks it up. And, uh, you know, it just seems like he has just uh, has a case of the can't get right here recently, um, unfortunately. And just, uh, you know, once you make a mistake, uh, especially road course racing, I found that uh, you keep making them. It's so easy to dwell on those mistakes and continue to make them. Well, you know what's funny is that that spin came on the heels of running his fastest lap of the race, which was a 120.6, which is absolutely just as fast as Sebastian Jackson, the leader, or the uh, second place driver, the driver who's led the most laps today, is running. We got another replay here, and this is Sebastian Jackson. Uh oh. Looks like, I mean, looking at lap, uh, times right now, I think he is okay when it comes to pace. I mean, looking at it, 4.6 seconds back from Isaacs. So it looks like uh, he, he didn't lose a lot of time there. Of course, you're still seeing Billy Billy Bowerton or Bowerman, I should say, still battling as well. Of course, Jerry Isaacs definitely can see that uh, Sebastian Jackson possibly incoming. Also, Big the traffic. battle for Ken uh, Lung and Wayne Taylor still underway. I do believe Ken Lung has actually made it by Wayne Taylor. Still battle pretty close though. Yeah, but again, key key factor here is if we do have a battle for the lead, uh, uh, Ken Lung is going to have to try to pass Wayne Hutchinson and try to be in position to be in that catbird seat to try to win. Wow, this this would be quite a brave move if he pulled this off, going on to Seaside Way, and I'll tell you what, oh, great move, yep. Faked out uh, Wayne Taylor there. Wayne went wide and let Ken Lung through, and uh, that's a great move to move up to the fourth spot. Now he's looking at least got a podium in his sights. Yeah, definitely, but of course, uh, 5.4 seconds essentially uh, to get up to Wayne Hutchinson. That's a, a long way to go. And, and Ken's car's hurt. We, we know that for a fact. He's got some damage on that race car. Jerry Isaacs, though, still dealing with lap traffic. This is slowing him down substantially. As uh, He has now lost uh, uh, quite a bit of time now, or, or should I say that the Sebastian Jackson has gained quite a bit of time. Now under four seconds is the gap to the lead as we're now less than 10 laps to go here at Long Beach. Isaac's definitely, uh, his hopes of winning this race are just ticking and ticking away here. Sebastian Jackson can taste it. One thing about it that I always talk about is that carrot on his dick mentality. Jackson might fall victim to that if he says, oh, I'm catching Isaacs, and I start, he starts getting a little bit proud of himself and uh, you know a little bit more cocky, he could make a mistake. A lot of times that does kind of tempt you to make a mistake when you think you're catching someone and you overdrive it. Jackson's still running under a minute 20 or in that minute 20 bracket. Uh, the other important thing I think to note is that the lap traffic ahead of Jerry Isaacs includes Billy Bowerman, who has been so fast today, but also been mistake prone. So as Jerry Isaacs catches up to them, I, I would hope that he's aware that Billy Bowerman can hold him up, number one, because he can run lap times that are faster than Jerry Isaacs, but the other thing is, he might spin, might cause an accident. And a great response from Jerry Isaacs on the last lap, a 120.9. Sebastian Jackson still faster at a 120.6. But Jerry Isaacs finding the pace at the right time with nine laps to go. Yeah, if he keeps doing that, it's going to make it much harder for Sebastian Jackson to actually get up here and contend. You talk about how hard it is to, uh, you know, it's easy to catch someone, it's hard to pass. Well, if he, if Isaac is running lap times that are somewhat comparable to Jackson, that's going to make it incredibly difficult. And Jackson's also uh, starting to have to deal with that same lap traffic that Isaacs was just having to deal with. Uh, and that has gave some of that time back to Isaacs. 
big, big group of lap cars up here. Three Whoa. cars all together. So now here, here's where it's going to get difficult. That's that. What a what a great move by the number 64 car to get out of the way. Well, I, I say that now. He still hasn't quite done it yet. But uh, yeah, a, a sportsmanlike move there. Stay out of the battle of the leaders. I don't think he's going to get the same courtesy from the next two ahead of him because they are indeed battling for position. So um, yeah, this is going to be this is going to get real intense here in the next couple of laps. It very much is, and it's getting intense for uh. Oh, Sebastian Isaac making a little bit of a mistake there. Coming off of turn 11. Got into the wall just a hair. This is going to give some of the time back to Isaacs here. Now coming back up to five seconds. Did that hurt the race car as he was coming out of the, the slowest corner on the racetrack? I think he, got, he hit a little bit of the inside wall there. That's so easy to do here at Long Beach. We'll see if we can get a replay uh, queued up. That did hurt his lap time. Uh, that's the first time in a little while that uh, Jackson has lost lap time to Jerry Isaacs. But uh, yeah, Sebastian Jackson made a little bit of a mistake there. You were just talking about that, uh, that potentiality and we've seen it uh, rear its ugly head. The gap now at uh, 4.8 seconds for Sebastian Jackson. And here's the replay of this issue here at the uh, hairpin. Actually, that's not uh, at the hairpin. This is trying to get around a lap car. What could have possibly happened here? You see, right, this is actually the moment where he got really uh, a lot of understeer, or oversteer, I should say. You saw he had to catch the vehicle, was slid it a little bit, and right a little bit after this, when he was coming through the hairpin, is when he actually caught the wall. So I think uh, that this moment right here probably elevated his heart rate quite a bit and caused him to make this next mistake that we're going to see here in just a moment. As we come uh, through some of these corners here, we're going to be coming onto the hairpin very, very soon. And uh, this is going to be the, the mistake we'll see here in just a moment. Right here, just a little touch on the wall. And you can see he comes off that the longest. You like you said this before. This is the longest straightaway. And he came off that corner just in such a way that he lost time. But he gained a lot of it back just now uh, with that last lap, which we do go live. He was just about a tenth faster than Jerry Isaacs. Yep, he responded. And now we got lap cars. That Now, th now what is going on here? Because we had, we had courtesy from the 64 car and now there's none the courtesy's out the window because that is the worst thing that sebastian jackson could have possibly dealt with right there he was very easy to pass for jerry isaacs but when sebastian jackson got behind him and understandably that's a tight part on the racetrack but man you wish you would have seen the same courtesy extended to both of the leaders from that lap vehicle oh, oh. in the wall in the I wall think I think his emotions are starting to get him. I think because of the way he was just raced there, didn't have a lot of courtesy, and, uh, you know, getting a little bit emotional, and he just got into the wall. I mean, that was a substantial contact. I don't know if that's going to really uh, kill the race car, but you can definitely tell that he's driving a little bit angry right now as we're coming to six laps to go. We got a spin. We got a spin in the hairpin. There's uh, there's a car backwards. That's 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 Billy, isn't it? Or uh, Yeah, that's yeah, it's Billy. <laughs> Billy again. So just, just what I said. Uh, Billy Bowerman once again backwards. Oh man, he's all over the racetrack. And again, this is in front of the leader of the race. Uh, Jerry Isaacs is not that far behind this battle. And uh, oh boy, oh. ay ay ay. Oh, that's been a trouble spot all night long, right there uh. at that, that hairpin. And good for Billy. I mean, he tried his best to get out of the way of Jerry Isaacs, but that was exactly the nightmare scenario that Jerry Isaacs was staring down right there. Uh, that is not what you want to see as the leader of the race is a car in reverse going down the main straightaway. Not at all. I mean, it's definitely a scary sight to behold. Now, I'm curious. Though, the chances for Jerry Isaacs have gone up quite substantially since Sebastian's been making more mistakes. Well, I, I'm curious about what the tow is, uh, what the tow situation is on Sebastian Jackson's car. It's so easy when you, with these open wheels when you touch the wall. Uh, what might happen to the suspension? We're going to get a replay here, I believe. Uh, this is Jerry Isaac's view of the incident involving Billy Bowerman here. And uh, this is what you would see if you're a race car driver coming around. Again, blind corner here. You're not expecting it. And there's smoke. There's a car in reverse. Oof. That's scary. Yeah, I mean, I kind of likened it, uh, likened it to uh, if you were sitting in the front seat of a car going down the interstate and you came up on a uh, tow truck that was towing an 18-wheeler and it was facing you. Like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> coming out of that corner, it's like a blind corner. You're not expecting 
to see a race car pointing towards you, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a frightening scenario. But another frightening scenario for Jerry Isaacs is the fact that Sebastian Jackson uh, just took six tenths of a second out of him on the last lap. And uh, he, he continues to close. It seems like lap traffic, the the concrete walls, everything seems to be working in against Sebastian Jackson right now. But as things stand, it looks like the track's going to be a little bit more clear. I guess we could look at the, the marching ants once again to get a true... Uh, a true sense of that. Yeah, pretty clear track ahead for Jerry Isaacs with five laps to go. There's really only one car, uh, and that's the 78 car there, that could potentially get in the way. But I think for the most part, this is a two-car battle right now, and lap traffic most likely, and I say most likely uh, without trying to jinx anybody, will not be a factor here towards the end of this race. Also uh, important to mention that Ken Lung, the gap has stabilized in that battle for the third spot between him and Wayne Hutchinson, still just hovering around the three second mark. So at the moment, uh, not, uh, not a battle that we need to necessarily keep on our radar as uh, we got four laps to go and the two leaders are closing together. They definitely are. But I really like, feel like Jerry Isaacs though has got this thing in the bag at the moment, unless he makes a mistake. Uh, as we have a replay queued up, of course, I mean, he would, I think uh, Sebastian Jackson would have to be running a, a lot faster. You see uh, Drew LaDonde, I do believe, having an issue here uh, coming through the hairpin as well. And there he goes. So that has just been the trickiest spot. We need to have a, a highlight reel of just the issues through the hairpin tonight. As uh, we come to now three laps to go here in just a moment. Jerry Isaacs has 4.8 seconds on Sebastian Jackson. Can he make it happen? Here, you know, Sebastian Jackson, if you're just joining us, has led the majority of this race. But Jerry Isaacs, even though he was involved in a crash earlier, was forced to be on a little bit of an unusual pit sequence, took the lead. I mean, who could have thunk it? Who could have thunk that this how this would happen? I mean, I, I definitely could not have predicted that Isaacs would be able to recover and take the lead that way. Yeah, the second half of this race has just been an absolute clinic for Jerry Isaacs. He's done everything he needed to do. He saved fuel. He had a quick pit stop. And now he's holding off the challenge of Sebastian Jackson, who's dominated this race. As we've got a replay here, and it's uh, once again, well, uh, it's, oh, yes, this is Jerry Isaacs having his issues earlier on in the race at the hairpin. And just watch this. He avoids the first uh, pile up between Billy Bowerman uh, and uh, Wayne Hutchinson, but then when he backs up, he gets pile drive from the back of the fifth and sixth place cars running at the time. He actually did another lap on the racing surface before he pitted four fuel tires and a fast repair. And after that, just absolutely did a, a Scott Dixon style fuel save. And somehow through the pit sequence, we expected strategy would be an issue today. We didn't quite expect it would be quite this much of an issue. Jerry Isaacs leads this motor race with three and almost two laps to go. Now, keep in mind, I think a lot of people, you know, if you're just joining us again, one thing we got to mention, there have been no full course cautions. I mean, yeah, it, it makes it would be, I'd say, somewhat conceivable, David, that if a full course caution had came out, Jerry could get back into this race. But no, he did all of this under green, which I think just makes it that much more impressive. Yeah, that's extremely impressive. When you can pull that off and do it under green, I mean, that's, as a driver, that's, for your ego as a driver, that's what you want, uh, for Taylor sure. Heart level stuff. <laughs> I mean, 100%, absolutely. And and I'll tell you what, he's doing, with, doing it with authority right now. The last lap, almost an entire second faster than Sebastian Jackson for Jerry Isaacs. He's got a little bit extra in that back pocket with two, less than two laps to go now. Uh, he's letting it eat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and who's to say that he hasn't been saving a little bit of gas here uh, towards the end here? And that's why, uh, I mean, of course, Sebastian has been really incredibly fast in his own right. But it's just been a fantastic show from Jerry Isaacs, of course. Uh, just, just also, I mean, we got even though we've been kind of harping on Sebastian Jackson here, uh, he has had a really great race here as well. I mean, very, very talented driver has, uh, you know, just made it look really easy. But unfortunately, Jerry Isaacs, with the strategy, the strategy that was forced upon him, has uh, taken lead. We're going to be coming to the white flag here any moment. Of course, uh, also, we've seen very good recoveries from... Uh
a good race and, and good drives from uh, Ken Lung. We were talking about him. He had some damage on that race car earlier. Uh, but it looks like he has got it uh, back up and underway. And he might even, it could be close. He's about 1.5 seconds back from uh, Wayne Hutchinson as we see the white flag is out here in the Long Beach Grand Prix. It has been a pleasure to call this race. Jerry Isaacs has the final lap. Can he make it through? Does he take it easy? I think he's got enough of a gap, enough of a buffer. He can wave to the fan. Yeah, with five seconds, I mean, I don't know if you're quite waving to the fan level at that point, but certainly he's got a good gap. He's driven such a good race today. This has really been a, a signature win for Jerry Isaacs if he can indeed make it one more lap. I mean, we don't want to we don't want to just give hand him the win right now. He's still got a lot of work to do. I also want to give a sh quick shout out to Brian Shrivner. He set the fastest lap of the race on the last lap at 120.1. So that's really cool. I mean, it's tough when you're that far back, but still to put a little bit of an exclamation mark on the day. But Jerry Isaacs has done an absolutely masterful job taking adversity and coming back to lead this race and looks like if he can get through these last three corners, win the Long Beach Grand Prix. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully he's able to make it on fuel here. He comes to turn 11 onto the front stretch here. And I think as long as he can coast there, I think he's going to make it. He's got about 3.8 seconds back to Steve. And he is. He is going to win this race. Jerry Isaacs. Your winner here in the Long Beach Grand Prix. What a job. Man, I'll tell you what. That colorful race car, we, we talked about it even before the broadcast began. And he goes to victory lane. Fantastic performance from that driver. Battle for third place coming to the line. Wayne Hutchinson and Ken Lung. We're going to have to see how that turns out. They're very close together. Some 29 seconds behind the leader. But I'll tell you what. Jerry Isaacs did an absolutely great job today. Uh, and so did Sebastian Jackson. I think we need to give him some credit. Absolutely dominant today. Wayne Hutchinson does take the podium position. Ken Lung uh, comes across in fourth. Uh, some great battling. And I think we were a little bit worried about this race today, looking at it. Julian Mucky, absolutely fantastic, up 22 spots from his starting spot. You know, we were worried about this going into it. 85 laps with Formula 4 cars. How the heck was this going to work? But I'll tell you what, it has been an entertaining show an unexpected show, and a deserving winner with Jerry Isaacs. 100%. I mean, it has been a fantastic show for sure. I have enjoyed it thoroughly. And, of course, I do believe we have our final results coming in here in just a moment. Of course, Jerry Isaacs is going to be celebrating uh, the victory. We should have the, uh, the results graphic coming up here very soon. As, of course, Isaacs still celebrating the victory. Some drivers still Coming across the start-finish line, I do believe we have a few drivers that have yet to cross. Some drivers, I do believe, might have even ran out of fuel out there. But here we go. Final results. Jerry Isaacs, a well-deserved win in the 51 machine. Of course, second place comes home. A really dominant show for Sebastian Jackson. Uh, third place, Wayne Hutchinson. Of course, uh, had a little bit of uh, some drama out there for that driver as well. Uh, fourth place, Ken Lung, incredibly fast drive for the 37. Fifth place, Wayne Taylor. Sixth place, Julian M Mucky. You talk about being the biggest mover, starting way back out of the top 20 and finishing in sixth. Seventh place, Rory Weatherington. Uh, quiet day. That's what you kind of want here at Long Beach. Eighth place, Richard McClure. Ninth place, Bryce Roberts. And rounding out to top 10 is Clarence Rosa. Yeah, Timothy Klaus in the 11th spot, Drew LaDonda in 12th. Billy Bowerman was uh, fast but fragile in the 13th spot. Wesley True in 14th. Ryan Scribner got the fastest lap of the race for the number 70 car, but 15th spot uh, on the day. 16th was Ryan Steele. 17th was Mark Redeker. 18th was Don Dolson. 19th was Damian Colty. 20th was Patrick Stein. 21st was Jason Ladotridge. 22nd was Chris Herring, 23rd Adam Johnson, 24th Roger Shack, Brian P. McGeervy was in 25th spot, Jonathan Diggs in the 26th spot, Joshua Mertz in 27th, he was exciting early on in the race, Brett Torshin in the uh, 28th spot, Ronald McPherson in 29th, Rob Powers in 30th, Ian Hardy in 31, and Dino Vela, who made the show but then finished in 32nd spot.
And that is a look top to bottom for our 31 car field here in the Grand Prix at Long Beach. We're going to go ahead and take uh, one final commercial break and we'll be right back with our post-race show here on Grid Vision. Hey, you know that guy who just before the green flag keys up his mic and asks, anybody got a setup? Well, this is him. This is Adam and hey, Adam needs some help. On the other hand, this guy over here, this is Steve. Steve is a solid racer and he knows his way around the garage. Steve's problem is time. With a job and a family, he can't find enough time to build competitive setups and to race as often as he likes. But as luck would have it, Steve knows a secret. He lets the Majors Garage crew chiefs do the setup work so he can focus on the racing. At MajorsGarage.com, Steve can get setups for over 60 cars on the iRacing service. So no matter what series he wants to jump into, he is covered. Somebody, anybody, really should tell Adam. See you at the garage. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the conclusion of the Major Series Long Beach Grand Prix. Of course, we uh, have just concluded 85 laps of action. Uh, my name is Brian Britt. Of course, David Land is my co-commentator, and uh, Austin Dobbershire has been doing a fantastic job down behind the cameras. We're actually going to be uh, starting our interviews here, our post-race show, I should say, as we're going to be joined in the booth by, of course, our third-place finisher, Wayne Hutchison. I mean, great job, Wayne. I mean, you seem like you had to go through... Uh, Quite a bit of drama out there on the racetrack. I mean, you had some accidents out there, but you managed to uh, come home and, and finish in third. I mean, not too far behind the leaders as well. How, how are you feeling? What were some of the challenges tonight? 
Well, I'm drenched in sweat for one thing. <laughs> That's a hot race, but uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. You know, I uh, I was able to stay with Sebastian Jackson there in the beginning stages of the race, and I thought the two of us would just pull away, but then everybody else caught up, <laughs> and uh, I think it was shortly after that that uh, I think Bill Bowerman spun right in front of me in the hairpin. And I ended up on top of him. And I'm not sure how I fell off the car, off his car, but <clears throat> was able to get going and continue on. So it was a uh, that made you know pretty interesting first first stint or so. Um, Want to shout out to Wayne Taylor? I, mean, I think he finished fifth in the end, but he was on my tail for 60% of the race and just you know he was faster than me, but not in the right places. So uh, it, made, it was a good fun race. Now, how did you uh, stand up to that kind of pressure? Because, I mean, you, you definitely had a lot of pressure coming from Wayne there. And also, even uh, Ken Long was catching you at the end there, too. Yeah, yeah, Wayne, um, he was, you know, he, he was fast in the wrong spots, like I said. So it was, it was pretty easy to keep him behind. Um, I could I could kind of pull away in the last part of the lap, and then uh, he would kind of catch up through the middle. Um, but it was, you know, so that wasn't so bad, although I had to make sure I didn't, you know, screw up. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't make any mistakes, but I didn't have to really worry that he was going to get a run on me or anything. But Ken, and he was really coming at the end. He was on a slightly different strategy because he had, I think, crashed early in the race. And so he was coming at the end there, and uh, glad we actually had some lap cars in the last lap or so. Actually helped me out, um, held, held him at bay. So, but yeah, a couple more laps, I'm sure he would add me. Well, definitely a great job, Wayne. Uh, how do you, how do you prepare for a race like this? I mean, 85 laps at uh, Long Beach uh, is quite a, quite a tough place. I mean, there's not a lot of room for error. I mean, how much preparation and practice time did you have to put in? Yeah, I, I didn't put enough in, to be honest. Probably only you know, a couple hundred laps <laughs> um, trying to find speed, you know, for qualifying, and uh, didn't really put enough race race practice in. But fortunately, I was able, you know, was starting up near the front and. Uh, you know, had a chance to, to figure it out early, um, but it was it was very much a, uh, a race where you had to be patient and you had to kind of not take chances in certain sections of the track, like turn one and the, and the, uh, the fountain, that kind of thing. Because if you, if you tried to push it at all there, um, you were gonna, you weren't going to have a very good race. Um, and then just you know, just drive clean and focus. It was <laughs> it was tough. These cars are tough to drive. They, they don't have a lot of power. So any little slip and you lose a couple of tents, it's in a heartbeat. And then they don't seem to have enough downforce on the rear anyway. And so it's really easy to lose the rear. I think you saw a lot of that today, probably. Um, yeah, so it's it was a challenge, but you just have to put the time in, I guess. Well, you definitely seemed like you knew what you were doing out there for sure. A great job on the podium there, Wayne. Uh, who can we give a shout out to uh, other than I know you already kind of sh shouted out Wayne Taylor. Uh, yeah, I mean, we had a few of my teammates in the race with me. Um, I think Rick McClure, uh, he was, I think he finished seventh or eighth. Um, Drew Lalonde, Ryan Steele, Mark Redeker were all in the race. Um, Wesley True. So it was a bunch of us from Dog Bear. Um, we were all being practicing and working on setups together. And we all had more or less <laughs> good luck in the race. Um, we had some good finishes. So uh, yeah, shout out to them. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Wayne. We definitely appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you in the future. Okay. See you guys later. All righty. That was Wayne Hutchison. Of course, it looks like uh can't seem to get a hold of Sebastian Jackson. So uh, we'll actually let uh, David Land uh, give you a chance to interview our winner, Jerry Isaacs. I'm sure you're dying to talk to him. Yeah, Jerry, uh, just first of all, congratulations. Uh, what, a, what a stellar win. I, I want to go back and talk about a couple of different issues throughout your race. Let's start at the very beginning because we're even seeing on the screen, uh, you had a little bit of wing damage essentially right from the start. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, coming into the, uh, oh, well, first of all, thank you guys for the, uh, the the words and the congratulations. Yeah, so going into the fountain, um, you know, I was trying to be cautious and slow up, but I just had a big checkup in front of me, got that wing damage and it really kind of slowed me down, but I didn't want to stop and do it so I, I just kind of raced it out and uh was planning on getting it fixed when i pit the uh first time yeah and obviously the, the the big moment of the race was the was the massive pile up at the hairpin that you just kind of you avoided at the beginning hooked it in reverse and then got pile drove from behind 
at that moment, what was your thought? Because I'm sure it wasn't, oh, yeah, I can just come back and win this race with a wrecked race car. Oh, absolutely not. That's not what I was thinking. First, obviously, I was just trying to figure out what kind of damage I had. Um, I took off and I had a meatball, so I, I obviously had a lot of damage. So at that point, I'm thinking, all right, well, go use my fast repair and try and salvage out a run here. And uh, let's see what we can do with it. Um, but uh, I, I finished that lap. I got my fast repair, came out, and I was running some pretty fast laps once I had my wing fixed and the, and the car fixed. My big issue at that point, though, was fuel because uh, I did not – if I had gone all out, I would not have made it. I had each stint of the two remaining stints, I had to fuel save to get one extra lap in. So I spent both those uh, – uh, both those second stints trying to fuel save and make sure I had enough fuel to make it uh, to the end of the race. You made up 12 seconds on the pit lane delta on Sebastian Jackson on that last stop. Where, what was the difference? Because we were watching the lap times and you both were pretty inconsistent. It would sometimes, you guys would dip into the 20s and then it would be a 22, one, one lap. Where'd that 12 seconds come in the pit sequence? Uh, I, actually, I talked to him afterwards. He uh, had a, uh, his pit crew didn't uh, fuel the car that, when he got in, and he had to go back and check the box and get it fueled up for him. So, yeah, he, he had a little uh, error there on the pit road that obviously benefited me. So had, had the duel played out, I mean, obviously you mentioned that second stint having to massively fuel save, which you were able to do, Scott Dixon style, frankly. Uh, but had it come down to a duel, did you, do you think you had anything for him in a straight-up fight? Um, I don't know because that second stint, he was going purple. Um, he was running his fastest laps of the race and I was still trying to fuel save. So, um, I, I think, I think if I didn't have to fuel save and, uh, he didn't have his pit error, I would love to, have, you know, just raced full on and, and seen what would have happened. I'm not sure, but you know, we both stubbed our toes and luckily I, I came out ahead by, uh, just getting a little lucky there. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about your livery because we have been remarking on that the entire 85 laps. Uh, we, we, we had a hard time listing colors that were not a part of your livery. <laughs> uh, please tell us what what you were thinking with this incredible bumblebee of color. Uh, did you uh, did you see the wording on it? I'll tell you, it was really, you know, every wing's labeled inside, upper, lower, um, inside the cockpit, outside the cockpit, front wing. I, I just was having fun with it, really. I mean, it wasn't, uh, it's not a, uh, a sponsor or anything like that. It just, it seemed like a whole lot of fun to me. Yeah, we, we love fun and we definitely appreciate you labeling the parts on the cars because sometimes <laughs> we forget that. Sometimes we, we say front nose, which there isn't a front <laughs> nose on the car. Uh, Jerry, uh, just before we let you go, just anybody you want to thank uh, on, on this win or just uh, describe your feelings uh, taking this win because I tell you, in the broadcast booth, it was impressive to see. Well, thank you much. I, I am uh, super, super psyched. Um, I'm just sweating because it was in part the excitement, but part it was just a physical race. And, uh, you know, we were talking to some of the other drivers and I'm just I'm like, shush, shush, shush. Hold it. I got to concentrate. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of luck. I'm, I'm glad to be up there. Um, I want to thank uh, Mad Sim Racing for putting me in the car. The Mad Sim Racing team were we're looking for a silver championship this year, and uh, hopefully this will go a long way to helping that effort out. Uh, majors for putting it on, and, and of course you guys for broadcasting, and lastly, just uh, a hi, Mom. <laughs> a lot of great drivers have won here at Long Beach. Jerry Isaacs joins that list today. Alrighty, that was Jerry Isaacs. Definitely a fantastic job for him, and I love how humble he was there saying that, uh, you know, he lucked into that win. I don't think that was, I don't think luck was truly uh, that oh. much involved. I think he earned that one, David. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But, you know, a humble race car driver is a fast race car driver, I've found. If you can keep the ego in check, generally speaking, you can keep it in check uh, when you're out on that racetrack. Jerry Isaacs, uh, a class act and a, and a fast race car driver. 100%. Well, what a fantastic show we had here. We definitely appreciate uh, Majors for, for allowing us to uh, call this series. Uh, and, of course, we definitely appreciate everybody out there tuning in as well. If you enjoy the show, make sure you give us a, 
a like and subscribe. I do believe we actually have a uh, schedule that we have to look at here for uh, next week. Definitely excited to see all the racing action that we're going to have uh, in the future here on Grid Vision. Of course, Sunday, uh, we're going to be going Global Truck Series Racing at Watkins Glen, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Tuesday, the Champion Power Equipment is going to be ending their uh, championship, essentially. So Champion Power Equipment is finally going to be crowning a champion. That's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Phoenix Raceway. Of course, uh, the following day, Pocono, uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to get to see those Thunderclap boys go and race, I do believe, the next gens at Pocono. So that's going to be an interesting one, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Friday, Austin Estrom and me are going to be uh, on the uh, call there at Daytona for some plate racing in the NIS series, and uh, that's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Sunday, 12.30 p.m., we're going to be cycling it right back around to Daytona in the Global Racing Trucks, and I have a feeling that is going to be an exciting race for sure. And uh, That is going to round out our next week's uh, our show, and of course, I do want to give a big thank you to David Land. It was a pleasure to call the uh, race with him tonight. Also, big shout-out to Austin Darbyshire for doing all the uh, excellent job, uh, you know, excellent camera work. I mean, he just... We didn't miss a single thing because of uh, Austin's work there for sure. Uh, and uh, once again, a big shout out to the majors guys uh, as we conclude the Grand Prix of Long Beach. Of course, big shout out to the co-owners, Justin Levine, Taylor Burris, everybody that's involved with Groove Vision, everybody that watches us. Uh, but we'll see you next time.